Suras Valley Sabre Dogs opening day yesterday and a big win for the Suras Valley Sabre Dogs as they were victorious 16 to 2. I'm Max Tanzer joined alongside Ballard Ackaway and we're here to break down everything you need to know coming here into game two of this series and Ballard let's start with that 16 to 2 victory from last evening. Uh, quite an offensive performance from the Sabre Dogs but I think that that almost overshadows the pitching performance from Dominic Parkhurst yesterday as well. Which impressed you the most? Um, I would have to say Dominic's performance on the mound really impressed me the most. Um, you know that eight, uh, was it the fourth inning when they scored eight runs, that hour-long inning, um, I guess you could say uh, hitting is contagious, but um, it was a total team effort, but Parker has only given up uh, two runs the entire night was, impressed me, was probably what impressed me the most, aside from Caden Schwabby's night at the plate. No doubt about that, and runs were a plenty offensively, and he got plenty of run support, you know, we'll play the interview later but I was able to talk to Jordan Williams and he chuckled at the fact that whenever Parkhurst takes the mound he gets a lot of run support. It was supported by a two run third inning, a ten run fourth and a four run fifth and that was all the Sabre Dogs needed of course. Again their record for most runs in a game last year was 18. They got 16 yesterday so quite a good start to the year if you're asking me. Let's take a look at some of the key performers offensively yesterday. As you mentioned Katie, Caden Schwabe was three for five. Uh, with an RBI as well, stole a few bases too. Bo Brewer was one for four with two runs scored and an RBI. Uh, Chase Keaton, one for four as well with an RBI. Jordan Williams, one for three with the two-run home run, had a sack fly as well. Uh, the only home run hit in this game, Ballard. 16 runs, you're expecting the ball to be flying out of the ballpark here. Uh, and Williams did get a hold of it, but besides that, it was a lot of manufacturing runs through the stolen base game, base running, taking your walks and so forth. Yeah, I was going to mention... Um Sabre Dogs on the base pass last night, I think, really created most of the runs that they scored. Uh, they really got Pete Meyer off his, um, out of his composure early, uh, being hectic on the base paths. Uh, you can thanks to Caden uh, Schwabe and Alan Greer out there. Um, no, but being active on the base pass really kind of uh, put Pete Meyer out of his comfort zone and really uh, made him focus more on the runners on the base and at, uh, at the plate. Definitely. Yeah, and Austin Hammerly out of the pen was a very impressive piece as well that I think many people will forget about. Two innings of one-run ball, struck out three batters. His stuff looked electric last night. Throwing the fastball hard, a really good breaking ball. Uh, as a tandem, those two pitches look like they could be really, really impactful uh, for the Sabre Dogs out of relief this season. Yeah, Hammerly came, down, came in and threw down the hammer, I guess you could say. Two innings, uh, two innings, one hit, three strikeouts. Um, he looked really good. Um, so if that's a sign for things to come, it should be... Line up with a lot of pop and hopefully a pitching staff that can um, kind of complement that. For sure. On the Whiskey Jack side of things, there were offensive struggles. Only four hits of a team as a team. Three of those came from Nolan Drill. He did drive in the only run from a batter, I should say, with an RBI single that came back uh, in the fourth inning. Now, the other run was scored on a wild pitch, but if you're the Whiskey Jacks tonight and Robbie Lawlin, you're looking for the offense to jump out in front early right here. Again, set the tone early. Obviously, it was a close game up until that bottom of the fourth inning, just 2-1, but once the Sabre Dogs were able to put 10 on the board, it really got away from them, and I think you had to have a lot of guys eat innings in that case, not necessarily what you want to see on the opener, but they got to be able to regain themselves tonight and really, really set the tone early. Um, yeah, hopefully we can see another inning like that tonight. Um, it's a beautiful day out the bar ballpark, so it won't be as cold uh, to sit through. But, no, that was that was exciting to watch for sure uh, if you're a Sabre Dogs fan. But, um, on the yeah, as you said, on the Wheat City side of things, I guess it's good to get some guys in the game and get some work, and uh, maybe they can get more comfortable going forward. For sure. Some of the other key performers for the Sabre Dogs yesterday, Alan Greer in his return to Minot, put up quite a performance as well. One for five, two runs scored. Stole a handful of bases as well. Again, I called it the Alan Greer Show last year because he does everything. He hits, he defends, he runs the bases not only very well, but very effectively too. Uh, Colin Hannigan had a big two RBI knock as well. I was really good behind the plate. I talked to Parkhurst uh, after the game, and he was talking about how he had met Colin Hannigan that day. And they had a little conversation in the clubhouse before the game, and they worked incredibly well together. And again, we talked about it on the broadcast yesterday, but it was one of his best pitching performances uh, of the year, if you include Minot State University season. And that's what you want to see from these from these players right here, because you know you're thrown into the fire a little bit, thrown out of your comfort zone. You're meeting new people. Most of these guys meeting new people for the first time, and they're your teammates. And you got to play with them and communicate. And baseball's such. You know, communication is such an important aspect of baseball. And to see Parkhurst and Hannigan connect on the first night, uh, that effectively is really, really good to see. Yeah, we kind of touched on the chemistry last night about how uh, this team has come together really fast. We've got a lot of personalities on the team. But I really um, 
Parkhurst's veteran poise on the mound, I think, played a big part in that, too. And Hannigan being here last year, was a lot of comfort between the two of them in the uh, position that they're in. So I think that really played a part into uh, Parkhurst's performance. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. First starting with the visiting Whiskey Jacks. It's going to be Ethan Sitzman, the shortstop, to lead it off. He was one for three yesterday. Dean Bittner, the third baseman, who made a couple of nice plays defensively, will bat second. Jake Jelly, the first baseman, batting third. Caleb McDowell, the DH, cleaning up. Nolan Drill, who had quite a night yesterday, three for four with an RBI, will be batting fifth in left field. Houston Fogelstrom will be in a right field, batting sixth. Rhett Stein, the catcher, will be batting seventh. Cameron Daigle will be at second base, batting eighth. And Brandon Tucker, who led off yesterday, will round out the nine in center field. On the mound for the Whiskey Japs this Whiskey Jacks this evening will be Sam Marhefke, a right-hander out of Upper Iowa University. Uh, this season had a tough time. Seven and two-thirds of an innings pitch, 10 hits, 18 runs, 14 of them earned. The big number, 15 walks in those seven and two-thirds of an innings pitch posted a 16.43 ERA. So for Marhefke here, I think this is quite an opportunity here this summer to really regain himself as he heads uh, into his next college season and really try to find himself as well. You know, obviously the goal is to win here in the Expedition League, but for a lot of these guys, it's about development as well, experimenting with different things. Yeah, um, on the Sabre, Sabre Dog side of things, I really hope that they can exploit um, Marhefke's uh, control issues. Uh, especially the base pass like they did last night. Yeah, you got that one-two with Caden Schwab and Alan Green. That's a lot of speed on the base pass, uh, setting the um, setting the table for uh, Bo Brewer and Drew Miller. So two big bobbers behind those two speedsters. Hopefully they can um, they can do the same thing they did um, they did last night to Pete Meyer and kind of distract them a little bit and let the let the big let the power guys go to work. For sure, walks were an issue for the Whiskey Jacks pitching staff last night. Is ten Saber Dogs hitters drew at least a walk. 10 in total, I should say. Two from Jordan Williams, two for Drew Miller as well. So expect them to be patient. You know, I think it was a good balance of being patient at the plate, but incredibly aggressive on the base paths, willing to take risks. And I think that was one of the biggest reasons why they were able to jump out convincingly so early. With that said, let's take a look at the Sabre Dogs starting lineup for this evening. We're going to toss it to the players to tell you the starting nine for game two of this series between the Whiskey Jacks and the Sabre Dogs. Leading off in left field. Caden Schwabe, North Dakota State University, Thompson, North Dakota. Batting second, the right fielder. Alan Greer, Chattanooga State, Atlanta, Georgia, Riverwood High School. Batting third, the first baseman. Bo Brewer, Paris Junior College, McKinney, Texas. Batting cleanup, the designated hitter. Drew Miller, Pryor, Oklahoma, Wichita State University. Batting fifth, the center fielder. Jordan Williams, Minot State University, Bird, Alabama. Batting sixth, the third baseman. Ethan Moore, Murray State College, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Batting seventh, shortstop. Declan Buckle, Minot State, Cornerbrook, Newfoundland, Canada. Hitting eighth, the catcher. Lance McDonald, Lake Michigan College, Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Batting ninth, the second baseman. Jack Paulson, Northern State University, Delano, Minnesota. And on the mound. Dalton LeBlanc, Paris Junior College, Quincy, Louisiana. Once again, you're starting nine for the Sabre Dogs this evening. Caden Schwabe in left, Alan Greer in right, Bo Brewer at first base, Drew Miller cleaning up at the DH spot, Jordan Williams in center field batting fifth, Ethan Moore, the third baseman, sixth, Declan Buckle at short batting seventh, Lance McDonald getting his first start in the Sabre Dogs blue tonight, batting eighth behind the dish, and Jack Paulson also making his Suez Valley debut, rounding out the nine at second base. Dalton LeBlanc will be your starting pitcher. With that said, Ballard, Let's go with our picks to click tonight. First, let's step back to yesterday. We were both quite successful. You went with Colin Hannigan. Colin was a stalwart behind the dish yesterday. Obviously, a key role to the dominant performance from Dominic Parkhurst. But not only that, picked up a two-run single as well. Uh, so good pick for you yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. See, I knew. I figured I knew that would happen. Absolutely. I knew that. I knew it. it you yes, have a crystal went, ball. With the, bat, with the bat, yes, he did. He did produce, but also behind the dish, he was really kind of the quarterback back there. No doubt about it. And for me, I chose Jordan Williams, and he left the yard. The only home run we saw in that game, a screaming line drive out to left field. So let's see if we could, could keep the mojo going here and continue it into tonight's game here as we get ready for game two. Who's your pick to click for the Sabre Dogs this year? Yeah, evening? tonight I'm going to go with um, Alan Greer. Okay. Uh, he's playing right field tonight, uh, batting in the two hole. Um, I, think he, I think last night was great for his confidence. Um, he's a grinder. Kid is very humble. Um, no, but I think tonight, after or after his performance last night, I think he's ready. I think he's settled in. And I think uh, tonight he's going to be a menace on the base pass. He's All right. Make, um, I like it. Yeah. 
Oh, I like it. A couple stolen bases yesterday, two to be exact. I'm going to go with Caden Schwabe, who was really good yesterday, three for five with an RBI, a handful of stolen bases as well. Uh, again, he sets the tone at the top of the lineup. I think he's going to be a key piece. Again, we have a lot of big power bats in the middle of this order when you look at Bo Brewer, Drew Miller, Jordan Williams, like we mentioned, just to name a few. Caden Schwabe, he's not going to leave the yard ten times this season, but he's going to be a constant on-base threat, really good bat-to-ball skills, has tremendous speed, uh, a really good athlete, and I think he's going to hopefully pick up a couple of big base hits tonight and set the table for the middle of the order for your guy, Alan Greer, who's hitting right behind him. And then you got the Meteor lineup in Brewer, Miller, Williams, and more. Let's talk about tonight's starting pitcher here for the Suez Valley Sabredogs. It's going to be the South Pot Dalton LeBlanc out of Paris Junior College, one of a few Paris Junior products here this season. In college this season, he went... 4-1 with a 4-1-0 ERA, struck out 41 hitters in about 37 and one-third of an innings pitch. Started six games, pitched in 12 games total. One of his best outings was back on February 5th, went six innings, one earned run, five hits, two strikeouts. So the Sabredogs looking for a little bit more of that tonight. Again, really good against lefties, of course, being a left-handed pitcher. Uh, and expect him to attack the zone tonight here against a Whiskey Jacks lineup that really struggled yesterday. and one to lead off hitter for the Whiskey Jacks, Ethan Sitzman. The bonk turns, kicks, fires. The next pitch is down low with a fastball for ball one. One ball, one strike. Very quick start to this one right here. LeBlanc working at a very quick pace as he fires the one one. It's a fastball that misses up and away. No make that a strike on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Delayed call by the home plate umpire, George Tyree. It'll be Anthony Atkinson manning the first base side as well. LeBlanc. Tosses the one, two, swinging a foul straight back. One ball, two strikes. It's Ethan Sitzman to lead it off. He was one for three yesterday for the Whiskey Jacks. Picked up one of just four hits for Wheat City last night against the Sabre Dogs pitching. LeBlanc hesitates, turns, tosses the one, two. Breaking ball, strike three. Called, he got him. Taking a trick out of the sleeve of Dominic Parker, starting his night off with a K. And that'll be out number one. Let's take a look at the starting defense tonight for the Sabre Dogs here. It's going to be Caden Schwabe in left. Jordan Williams moving over to center field. Alan Greer in right. More Buckle, Paulson, Brewer left to right on the infield. And your battery will be LeBlanc and McDonald is the first pitch on the way to Dean Bittner is a strike that bites the outer edge about knee high. 0-1 the count. Bittner manning third base for the second straight day. LeBlanc tosses the next pitch. It's swung on and cued off the end of the bat. Foul for strike two. No balls, two strikes. So we talked about Parkhurst, who was working very quickly yesterday. LeBlanc seems to take it about five, six seconds in between pitches, really taking control. Quite a presence on the bump so far. He said again, belt high. Turns, tosses the 0-2, swing and a miss for strike three. What a start. The first two batters he faces, he retires via the K. Two up, two down. Very similar start to yesterday evening's ball game where Parker struck out the first two batters he faced. It was Jake Jelly who stood in the way of what would have been an immaculate inning for Parkhurst. Had an 0-2 count, was a strike away, but Jelly would ground out to the shortstop and buckle. LeBlanc steps back on the mound here. Tosses the first pitch on the way. It's a fastball in the outside corner for strike one, 0-1. LeBlanc, if it weren't for the first ball in the first at bat, would be flirting with an immaculate inning of his own. He's set, turns, tosses the 0-1, swing and a miss for strike two. No balls, two strikes to count. Man, oh man, pounding that zone, very efficient. If you're head coach right now, Benton Schweinfurth, being a former college pitcher, being a pitching coach in the past as well, you gotta be very happy with this start. LeBlanc tosses the 0-2, misses down away with an off-speed pitch for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Remainder of the lineup for the Whiskey Jacks, gonna be Jelly, McDowell, Drill, Fogelstrom, Stein, Duggle, and Tucker. LeBlanc, one, two on the way. Fastball misses upstairs, ball two. Count now even at two balls and two strikes. Infield playing back with two away. Outfield straight up, just getting underway here. Chilly night, about 54 degrees at first pitch here in Minot. Two, two, it's a fastball on the outside corner for strike three. What a start for Dalton LeBlanc. Strikes out the side in order. We're gonna head to the bottom of the first inning. Your score, the Whiskey Jack Zero. The Sabre Dogs coming up. Thank you. 
This is Bo Brewer for the Source Valley Saber Dogs, reminding you that there is a reason why Slim Chicken hangs guitars on their walls and plays the blues. It's the same reason why they only serve you 100% all natural chicken tenders. It's the way they like it. There is a reason why they treat you like family and serve food just like you would at home. Because you deserve it that way. And there's a reason it's made fresh when you order and served hot because that is their promise to you. Come see us at Slim Chickens or order online at slimchickens.com. This is Caden Schwabe, an outfielder for the Surf Valley Saber Dogs, reminding you that your favorite ball club is on all social media platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Make sure to follow for starting lineups, score updates, and all of the exclusive Saber Dogs content you'll need for the summer. Follow us at SV Saber Dogs and use the hashtag SCODogs. It's going to be Caden Schwabe now to lead it off for the Sabre Dogs here against the right-hander for the Whiskey, Jackson Marhefke. Sam Marhefke out of Upper Iowa University, 5'11", 200 pounds. Had a tough year with Upper Iowa. Gave up 14 earned runs in seven and two-thirds of an innings pitch. The glaring number 15 walks in that span. So you got to imagine the Sabre Dogs will be quite patient tonight. Here's the first pitch on the way from Marhefke. It's a strike on the outside corner with a fastball. Owen won the count. Caden Schwabe had quite the evening yesterday, went three for five, reached base in his first four plate appearances, had an RBI and four stolen bases as well, showing off that speed. Marhefke tosses the 0-1, swinging a ground ball down the first base line, and it's going to be under the glove of the first baseman. Jelly's going to roll towards the corner. Schwabe can run. He's digging for two. He's going to round for three. Still, no, The ball hasn't still been picked up yet. Is Schwabe will waltz in the third base, standing up with a leadoff triple. He's four for six to open up the campaign. And right off the bat, the Sabre Dogs have the go-ahead run at 90 feet away here in the bottom of the first inning. This was a decently hard hit ground ball down the first base line. The first baseman, Jelly, was playing well off the bag, reached towards his forehand side. It initially looked like he had a play on it. Snuck just about a couple inches underneath his glove and rolled towards that corner. The right fielder, Fogelstrom, was playing a couple steps towards right center, so he had a long way to go to get this one. So Schwabe now at third base. Here's Alan Greer. Marhefke fires the first pitch, swinging a ground ball, seared to short, gobbled on a hop by Stitzman. He'll toss across in time to retire Greer. Meanwhile, on the play, Schwabe will come around the score. So just like that, the Sabre Dogs jump on the board first. It's one to nothing here in the bottom of the first inning. An RBI for Greer, his first of the season. Jumping on the first pitch as we've seen him do the last year and a half or so. So very quick start here. Just about four pitches. It's already 1-0 Sabre Dogs here in the bottom of the first. Here's the big right-hander, Bo Brewer. Marhefke's pitch on the way to strike on the inside corner, 0-1. Brewer getting the start at first base tonight after starting at the hot corner at third base yesterday evening. He was one for four with a couple runs scored and a sacrifice fly RBI. Marhefke fires the next pitch, an off-speed pitch it misses upstairs and in for ball one. Count at one ball and one strike. The rest of the lineup for the Sabre Dogs going to be Drew Miller, Jordan Williams, Ethan Moore, Declan Buckle, Lance McDonald, and Jack Paulson following Bo Brewer. Count even at one. Mark Hefke kicks and fires, swinging a ground ball, chopped down the third baseline and foul out of play. Count quickly moves to one ball and two strikes. Taking a look at the defense tonight for the Whiskey Drax. It's going to be Drill, Tucker, and Fogelstrom left to right. Bittner and Jelly at the hot corner. Stitzman at short. Daigle at second. And Stein will be your catcher. The only difference is Stein behind the dish. It was Caleb McDowell who started at the catcher position yesterday. He's deep he's tonight. Here's Marhefke's 1-2 on the way. Misses inside with the fastball for ball two as Brewer backs away. Count even at two balls and two strikes. For McDowell... It was quite a busy night behind the dish yesterday. Had to block a lot of pitches. The Whiskey Jacks pitching staff walked 10 Sabre Dogs hitters as well, so he's getting a much-needed day off. Two balls, two strikes. Marhefke kicks and fires inside over the head of Brewer as he ducks out of the way for ball three. Count now runs full at three balls and two strikes. 
Never want to see a ball buzz past the head. Again, it looks like Marhefke is struggling a little bit with that command with his fastball. Has missed inside a couple times in this at-bat. one nothing Sabre Dogs here early on the Allen Greer RBI ground out. Three balls, two strikes. Here's Marhefke's pitch on the way. Swinging a ground ball fouled on the third baseline again. Out in front of a breaking ball. Count stays at three and two. Got started on the Caden Schwabe triple down the right field line. So he now has a single, a double, a triple to his name this season so far. Three singles, in fact. Leading the team in hits with four. Brewer looking for hit number two on the year. Marhefke fires the 3-2 swing, and he just gets a piece of a breaking ball right there and fouls it straight back. Count stays at three and two. So back-to-back -back breaking balls right there again. Bo Brewer just waiting long enough out in his front foot on both pitches. Queuing it off the end of the bat. We'll see what Marhefke and Stein come up with right here after a couple of breaking balls to slow him down. Infield shifting, Brewer to pull, the second baseman Daigle ranging up the middle. Marhefke delivers the 3-2. It's up and in, four ball four. So a walk to Bo Brewer as he'll toss the bat towards the first base dugout and trot over to the first base pillow. So another base runner for the Sabredogs here with one away and again. Trying to jump out early and convincingly as they did yesterday with that 10-run bottom of the fourth inning. Really took it out of the hands of the Whiskey Jacks early, and they have a chance to do that here early on as well. Here's Drew Miller, the left-handed designated hitter tonight. Product of Wichita, Wichita State University is the first pitch. is down low and in for ball one, 1-0. One and oh. He was one for three yesterday, a couple of walks, a couple runs scored. Big left-handed hitter, a guy that... Alex Miklos is excited to see here in this Sabre Dogs lineup. Marhefke from the stretch as he has been all night. Fires the 1-0. Inside that's going to hit Miller on what looks like the front shin. So he'll take first base. So back-to-back -back free passes. Not what Marhefke was looking for to open up this frame. And as we that talked about, so command has been a struggle for him earlier this year when he was back at Upper Whoa. Iowa University. And it looks like it's continuing here tonight in his Expedition League debut. A walk and a hit by pitch to... Back-to-back -back batters here, and just like that, Jordan Williams has a first and second spot here with one away. Williams started in left field last night in center field today. Was one for three, but that one hit was a big one. A two-run home run over the left field wall. A screamer, a laser shot to deep left field for home run number one of the year. Here's Marhefke's first pitch on the way. It's a fastball that misses inside for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Williams, a uh, Product of Minot State University, was playing here at Corbett Field just about a week ago in the playoffs. Finds himself wearing red once again, but Sabre Dogs red instead of Beavers red. Marhefke from the stretch, here's his 1-0. Swing and a foul straight back. Count now even at one ball and one strike. Sabre Dogs wearing their bright red tops tonight with the white bottoms. Quite a contrast compared to the baby blue tops and baby blue pants that they sported yesterday. For the Whiskey Jacks, going with their Columbia blue tops with the navy blue sleeves, the Columbia blue hat, and their white pants as well. If the Whiskey Jacks decided to wear these uniforms to yesterday, we would have seen quite the similarity. It looks like almost the same team playing each other. One ball, one strike to count. One run in already here in the bottom of the first. Here's the next pitch to Williams. It's a breaking ball in the dirt, blocked by the catcher Stein. Heading for second is... Brewer, he'll get in there safely with a slide. Right behind him is Miller heading into second, so they'll advance on the wild pitch. And all of a sudden here, the Sabre Dogs are continuing to threat second and third one away. It was a breaking ball in the dirt. The catcher, Stein, had to range to his right to block it. Looks like he wasn't ready to throw. He looked like it caught him off guard a little bit, seeing Brewer head to third base. And this aggressive base running continues here for the Sabre Dogs and gives Jordan Williams a spot to drive in a couple of runs. Brewer at third, Miller at second. Pitch on the way is a fastball down and away for ball three. Three balls, one strike, the count. For those watching on YouTube Live, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to like and subscribe. Put on your notifications to know when every Sabre Dogs game can be streamed live. Hitters count, 3-1 on the way. Swing and a miss out in front of an off-speed pitch for strike two. Count now runs full. So Williams digs back into the box. One run in, the triple from Schwabe, an RBI ground up from Greer, then a walk to Brewer, a hit by pitch to Miller. A wild pitch has them at second and third. Here's Marhefke's 3-2 pitch. It's swung on a fly to left field, fairly deep, drill ranging towards the gap in left center. 
He'll camp underneath it to make the catch. Tagging from third is Brewer. He can walk home as he scores standing up. The throw heads into third, so another run is in, and the Sabredogs double their lead. It's now two to nothing here in the bottom of the first inning. So another sacrifice fly. We saw two yesterday, one here early on in the bottom of the first inning for Williams. That's RBI number four here on the young season. Haven't even gotten through game two yet. So two away now. Miller holds at second base. Here comes the third baseman, Ethan Moore. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Drove in a run on a sacrifice fly yesterday. Miller will be going on contact with two away. Marhefke from the stretch. Fires the first pitch. It's a strike on the outside corner. No balls, one strike to count. Declan Buckle, the shortstop on deck. Moore got the start at second base yesterday. Now getting the start at the hot corner. Wind gently blowing in from straightaway center. Here's Marhefke's 0-1. It's a fastball that misses down away for ball one. Count now even at one ball and one strike. Sun peeking through a little bit here. Again, it was a very cold, cloudy day. Baseball gods trying to give the Sabredogs fans a little bit of sunshine here to open up the season. Miller takes his lead from second. Two away, 2-0 two Sabredogs, bottom of the first. Marhefke from the stretch. 1-1, it's a breaking ball. Back up breaking ball that misses up and in for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Second baseman Daigle holding on Miller at second base, ranging a little bit towards the center of the diamond. Outfield about straight up. Again, drill Tucker and Fogelstrom left to right in the outfield. Marhefke from the stretch. Here's his 2-1 on the way. Swing and a miss. Big rip from Moore right there for strike two. Two balls, two strikes. So if you are the Whiskey Jacks, and more specifically Robbie Lawlin, their best coach, you're looking to at least get a decent amount of innings out of Marhefke after the bullpen relief staff had to eat a lot of innings yesterday. Count even at two, two away. Here's Marhefke's next pitch. Swing and a miss for strike three. Breaking ball in the dirt blocked by Stein. He'll find a lane toss across to first, and that will retire more by a step and retire the side. But the Sabredogs pick up two runs on one hit, no errors, leave one runner on. Reading to the top of the second inning. Whiskey Jacks nothing. Sabredogs two. Start planning your summer road trips with a brand new camper and truck. Head to Four Bears Casino now, play your favorite slots, and earn entries for their July 3rd truck and camper giveaway. It's your chance to win a decked out camper and 2021 pickup with full towing package. Plus, get your tickets for Dwight Yoakam, live in concert June 19th, and enjoy water fun on a yacht tour of Lake Sakakawea or a splash in their water park. Check out all the fun on their website, all at Four Bears Casino and Lodge, four miles west of Newtown. The Service Valley Sabredogs are back for another fan giveaway. Fridays are always for our fans. This giveaway will be a water bottle brought to you by the North Star Community Credit Union. The first 500 fans to 10 will get one of these Sabredog branded water bottles. Come out to watch the Service Valley Sabredogs play against the Spearfish Sasquatch at 705 at Corbett Field and be a receiver of the giveaway. Two nothing here early on as we enter the top half of the second frame. It's going to be Dalton LeBlanc out for his second inning of work, and what a tremendous start to this ball game for him. Struck out the side in order, two looking, one swinging, and it was pure dominance blowing it past this Whiskey Jacks lineup. Looking to continue it here as he's due up to or he's set to face four, five, and six in the order. Here comes Caleb McDowell, the designated hitter. LeBlanc's first pitch is swung on and fly to right field, fairly deep. Greer on his horse, turning and looking. This one is gone. Opposite field home run for Caleb McDowell, the first round tripper of the campaign for the Whiskey Jacks, and that cuts the deficit in half. It's now two to one, Suarez Valley. So McDowell, seeing how aggressive LeBlanc has been early on, jumps on a fastball and quite an impressive shot for a right-handed hitter. A hard line drive over the right field wall just below the scoreboard in right center field. Initially off the bat, it looked like Greer may have had, may have had a read on it. Then just had to watch it fly a couple feet over his head. Very reminiscent of the home run from Williams yesterday. Got out in a hurry. First pitch on the way here to Nolan Drill. He's up and away with the fastball for ball one. 
So first home run of the year, first hit of the year for McDowell. Here's the 1-0 on the way. Breaking ball just misses upstairs for ball two. 2-0 two, no, the count. LeBlanc Cox has had a little bit toward the right. Wanted that pitch right there. So hitters count to Drill, who was 3-4 for four last night. The 2-0 is swung on and skied in the air to right center field. Williams ranging to his left, Greer to his right. It's going to be Alan Greer, the right fielder, to make the catch deep in the gap for out number one. So a good bounce back for LeBlanc. A hot hitter as well, Nolan Drill, who picked up three of the four hits last night for the Whiskey Jacks, including an RBI single. So here comes Houston Fogelstrom, right fielder tonight. Here's LeBlanc's first pitch. It swung on and popped up again to straightaway center field this time. Williams takes a step back, now comes in as he... Steps to his right to make the catch for out number two. So a couple of high towering fly balls right here. About five, six seconds of hang time on that one as it was sent up the elevator chute. LeBlanc and the Sabre Dogs will take it. Two up, two down after the leadoff home run. So here comes Rhett Stein to the plate to catch it tonight. The age yesterday, he's o he was 0 for 4 yesterday. Got the silver sombrero, three strikeouts. As the first pitch on the way from LeBron LeBlanc is a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. So despite the home run, LeBlanc sticking with the fast pace here. Wind now gently blowing out towards right center. So the next pitch is a breaking ball that misses down away. Ball one, one and one. Again, the catcher tonight, Lance McDonald, after Colin Hannigan got the start yesterday. The one, one, misses down and away, ball two, two and one. And something so interesting about this situation for a lot of these ball players right now is that they're just meeting these guys. McDonald and LeBlanc arrived in town just a few days ago. As he kicks fires, the 2 1 is outside for ball three. Count that moves to three balls, one strike. Hitters count for Stein. You're just meeting these guys, and a lot of times your relationship with your catcher or with your pitcher from the other perspective is incredibly important in terms of just comfort and being on the same page. And they're being thrown in the fire instantly as the 3 1 pitch is on the way and swung on and laced down the left field line. That's going to get down for a base hit. Schwabi's going to cut it off. A wide turnaround first by Stein. He'll retreat to first base, so a two-out single for him. He's the tying run here with two away in the top of the second inning. Hitters count right there. Got a pitch over the heart of the plate and turned on it. Hit a hard top-spinning line drive down the left field line. Schwabi, who runs well and covers a lot of ground, was able to cut it off before it got to the track, limiting Stein to just a single. So here comes Cameron Daigle, the second baseman to the plate. He was 0 for 3 yesterday. Lefty on right. First pitch from LeBlanc is a fastball that runs outside and low for ball one. One ball, no strikes. With two away, infield playing straight up. The third baseman Moore a couple steps behind the third base bag. Center fielder Williams shading a couple steps towards right center. LeBlanc from the stretch. Here's the 1-0. It's a fastball that misses well outside ball two. 2-0. Two so in the first inning, we saw Marhefke missing inside with his fastball, running arm side, seeing similar tendencies here with LeBlanc in the second frame. Stein takes his lead from first base as LeBlanc will have him throw a move over there. Stein gets back in standing up. LeBlanc is southpaw, has Stein right in front of him. Count now, two balls and no strikes to Daigle. Another hitter's count. LeBlanc from the third base side, the rubber. Set belt tie, fires the 2-0. It misses down away for ball three. 3-0 the count. So after a very quick start in which he struck out the side in the first, has gotten into some trouble here. Gave up the leadoff home run to McDowell. Induced a couple of flyouts, then the single to Stein, and now is a 3-0 count here to Daigle. Next pitch on the way is a strike on the knees on the outside corner. Good spot. Count quickly moves to three balls and one strike. Blanc leans in. He's set. Here's his 3-1 on the way. Misses way outside for ball four. So another walk we've seen here tonight. First via LeBlanc. And that pushes Stein over to second base. He's the tying run and allows Daigle to reach first base. So first and second now here with two away. One run already in here in the top of the second. Thanks to the Caleb McDowell opposite field solo home run. LeBlanc leans in for the sign. Third base side. He's set. From the stretch, kicks, fires the first pitch. In the dirt with an off-speed pitch for ball one as McDonald slides to his knees to stop that one. One ball, no strikes. Again, thanks to those tuning in on YouTube Live. Make sure to like and subscribe. Put on 
notifications as well so you can know whenever the Sabre Dogs are being live streamed. The block from the stretch, here's his 1-0, swing and a high fly ball to straightaway center. Williams steps in, now goes back, waves his hands in the air to call everybody off as he makes the catch head high, and that will retire the side. So LeBlanc weaves out of trouble, but does give up the home run to Caleb McDowell. We have a ball game here early on as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Your score, the Whiskey Jacks 1, the Sabre Dogs 2. In times like these, it's good to know there's a place where people know who you are, no matter how long you've been gone. A place where the smells of home cooking are still in the air. Where a simple wave warms your heart. And sharing stories with family, friends, and your community is just a way of life. Yes, in times like these, it's good to be home. Farmers Union Insurance. Protecting what's important in life. The Glenburn Fire Department will be joining the Sirs Valley Sabre Dogs at Corbett Field this Thursday for passive boot night in an effort to raise money to help them recover from a devastating fire at their station. As a community, let's show our support for the fire department. The game starts at 7.05 against the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. Game two of this three-game set between the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks and the Suez Valley Sabre Dogs. Suez Valley currently up two to one here at the bottom of the second inning. The Whiskey Jacks instantly answering back thanks to the home run from McDowell the other way. It's going to be Declan Buckle, the shortstop, to lead it off. Then McDonald and Paulson to follow. Seven, eight, and nine in the order here against Marhefke. We had a tough first inning, allowed the triple to Caden Schwabe. The run came around to score on the rear ground out. Then a walk hit by pitch, a sack fly. Retired more via the strikeout to end the inning is the first pitch on the way to Buckle. Misses up and in for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Thank you for listening here on Mixler and YouTube Live. Feel free to use the comment section to vote for your player of the game as we get later into this one. That will be our post-game interview. Here's Marhefke's 1-0 on the way in the dirt with a fastball for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. The player with the most votes will be our post-game interview. Get to talk it posted on social media, so make sure to get those comments in, and we'll count them up by the ninth inning. Marhefke comes set, belt tie. Tosses the 2-0 on the way to Buckle. It's a breaking ball that floats over the heart of the plate for strike one. Two and one the count. For Buckle, we mentioned it yesterday, nursing a sore back after hurting it a couple weeks ago in the weight room. Says he's close to 100% after the big league yesterday was taken out for precautionary reasons. The 2-1 is a front door breaking ball that bites the inside corner for strike two. Two balls, two strikes. And again, early on here in this season, at 64 games, you want to be careful. Buckle, a huge piece for this Sabre Dogs roster, not just because of his talents, but his versatility all over the diamond as well. Here's Marhefke's 2-2 on the way. Swing and a line drive left field. Drill racing back. He's going to make the catch about head high, about five, six steps in front of the track for out number one. Good piece by Buckle as he barreled that one up. Good start for Marhefke here. One quick out. So here comes the catcher, Lance McDonald, getting his first start of a, as a Sabre Dog tonight. A switch hitter swinging from the left side with the right hand hitting Marhefke on the mound. Spent this year at Lake Michigan College. As Marhefke comes set, fires the first pitch on the way. It's an off speed pitch that misses low for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Stands at 5'11", 195 pounds. Straight up stance, slightly open from the left side. Marhefke set, third base side of the rubber. Takes a deep breath. Tosses the 1-0 on the way. It's a breaking ball that bites the outside corner for strike one. One ball, one strike. For a catcher, or really for any athlete, McDonald runs quite well. Talked to him about it earlier. A 6'6", which is quite elite, especially given that he's a catcher. As the 1-1 is on the way, it's swung on a chop down the first baseline and foul for strike two. 
one ball, two strikes. And you'd imagine, you know, a guy who can run that fast is probably quite athletic. And just like Declan Buckle, McDonald's quite versatile as well, can play some infield spots, some outfield as well if needed. Here's the one, two on the way. It's an off-speed pitch that misses down away for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. And it's not too many times you see a catcher with that type of speed. You know, the fastest catcher in Major League Baseball right now, JT Real Muto, by a large margin, and he stands alone in that category. Here's baseball live on the Sabredogs Radio oh, Network. Hey, Welcome back to Corbett Field, entering the top of the third inning. Two to one Sabre Dogs here. We apologize for the technical difficulties on YouTube Live. For those that missed it, the inning ended with a strikeout to McDonald and a ground ball to short from Paulson. So here we are in the top of the third inning, top of the order here for the Whiskey Jacks. As LeBlanc delivers his first pitch, it's an off speed pitch that misses upstairs and away for ball one, one and oh. Sitzman struck out looking back in the first inning. LeBlanc fires the next pitch. It's swung on and seared through the six hole in the left field for a base hit. So early swinging are the Whiskey Jacks here. The second time through as Buckle tries to back pick Sitzman at first base, but he'll get back in safely. So a single for him, second base hit of the campaign. First of the night for him. He's now one for two and the leadoff base runner here to open up the top of the third inning. So it looks like the Whiskey Jacks are starting to hit the ball hard off of LeBlanc. Again, a hard one hopper through the six, so all Buckle could do is watch it steam through, it was ranging up the middle. Here's Dean Bittner, the first pitch on the way, bites the outside corner at the knees for strike one, 0-1-1. One, one. Bittner is 0-1 for one so far, struck out swinging back in the first inning. Sitzman has good speed, takes his lead from first. The next pitch on the way is swung on a miss for strike two. Count moves quickly to no balls and two strikes. Infield ranging in double play depth for the middle infielders, that's Buckle and Paulson. Third baseman more even with the bag. His pitch is on the way. It's taken up and away for ball one. One ball and two strikes. On deck, a three-hole hitter and Jake Jelly, then Caleb McDowell to follow. LeBlanc set from the stretch. The one-two swing, and he just gets a piece as he chops it straight back. Count still stays at one ball and two strikes. So a much different look here for the Whiskey Jacks, offensively speaking. Been very aggressive, been hitting the ball much harder than they were last night. The one two on the way, swung on and popped up. Right side foul territory, Brewer calls everybody off as he makes the catch in the coach's box for out number one. So one quick out after the leadoff single here for LeBlanc that's gonna bring up the right-handed hitting Jake Jelly. As we mentioned, the Whiskey Jacks could only muster four hits yesterday, three of which courtesy from Nolan Drill. Highlighted by the dominant performance from Dominic Parkhurst, who struck out 11 Whiskey Jacks hitters in seven innings, just walked two. Two runs scoring on an RBI single and a wild pitch yesterday for them. Here's LeBlanc's first pitch on the way to the right-hander. It's a breaking ball that floats over to the plate for strike one. 0-1 oh the count. Jelly, a tall right-handed hitter. Open stance from the right side, lots of pop. Still looking for his first hit of the year. LeBlanc sat third base side. Stitzman holds as there's a swing and a ground ball to short. Buckle deep in the hole goes to second for one. He's out. The throw to first is not going to be in plenty of time. As beating it out is McDowell. 
So that will be out number one. Again, a close play at second for the shortstop. Buckle raging onto the cut of the outfield grass. Had to quickly transfer to his throwing hand and sling it over to the second baseman, Paulson. And it was just in time to retire Bittner by about a half a step or so. And really who he was sliding by about two or three inches. But LeBlanc will take it. The 6-4 fielder's choice. Jelly safe at first. Here comes Caleb McDowell. First pitch on the way is a breaking ball over Broadway for strike one. 0-1-1. McDowell going with no batting gloves today. Don't see that too often anymore. Here's the 0-1 on the way. Swinging a chopper to third. Moore steps back to play on the long hop. Gathers his feet, throws it across. It is not in time as McDowell beats it out. So an infield single. And just like that, the Whiskey Jacks have a first and second spot here with two away. And again, a tough play for third base for Moore. And in between hop, instead of charging it aggressively, he decided to step back and play it on the long hop but fielded it on his back foot. And then all of a sudden, knowing he had to hurry, he had to throw off his back foot so he couldn't get much on it. And there's a one hopper to the first base from Brewer. And McDowell was able to beat it out. So now Jelly at second. He's the tying run. McDowell the go-ahead run at first. Here comes the right-handed hitting Nolan Drill, who's swinging a hop bat. LeBlanc's first pitch on the way. is a fastball that misses up and away for ball one. One ball, no strikes. So credit McDowell with a base hit. He's now two for two with the home run of the single. Drill looking for his first base of the night. Trying to check him with an RBI as well. LeBlanc from the stretch. Here's his 1-0. Breaking ball. Misses down and in for ball two. 2-0 two the count. Got to wonder how long Le the leash is for LeBlanc tonight. Parker's threw about 85 pitches yesterday going seven strong frames. Here's LeBlanc's two on the way. Swung and fouled straight back into the parking lot for strike one. Two and one the count. And that is quite a blessing for the Sabredogs, the fact that Parkers could go seven innings because that does save your bullpen as they have plenty of arms ready for today, knowing that there's a much thinner roster with some guys not having arrived yet in town. Always can help to have your pitchers go deep. Two balls, one strike the count. LeBlanc's pitch on the way is a fastball on the outside corner for strike two. Count now even at two balls and two strikes. Sabre Dog fans, two strikes, two outs. We need some strikeout noise here. Jelly takes his lead from second. McDowell at first. Two to one, Sabre Dogs top of the third inning. LeBlanc looking to get out of this major jam. He's set. The two strike pitch on the way. Swing and a miss for strike three. Blocked by McDonald. He throws the first a bit high, but the first baseman Brewer catches it cleanly, taps the bag, and that will retire the side. Strikeout number four on the night for LeBlanc as he weaves out of the first and second spot. Running to the bottom of the third, about a third through this ball game. Sabre Dogs lead it two to one. An alcohol-related crash will probably happen in North Dakota today, and another will happen tonight. Still, it's pretty common to hear people making light of it like it's no big deal. We can try to laugh it off, but it keeps happening over and over. Impaired driving isn't funny. Always drive sober or find a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the North Dakota Department of Transportation through Vision Zero. Join us at Corbett Field to watch your Surs Valley Sabre Dogs play the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. It's this Wednesday, and you know what that means. Boneless wings at the stadium, Buffalo Barbecue. Either way, come on over to the field to be a part of the fun. Tickets on sale now. You won't want to miss it. The game starts at 7.05. Bottom half of the third inning, top of the order due up here for the Sabredogs. Caden Schwabe, Alan Greer, and Bo Brewer here against Marhefke, who put together a very, very solid second inning in which he set down the Sabredogs bottom of the lineup, one, two, three. Here's his first pitch to Schwabe on their way. It's swung on a chop to the first base side. The first baseman, Jelly, can't field it cleanly, and he's going to toss to first, but Schwabe is beating it out by about five or six steps, so... It'll be interesting how they rule that one. Again, the first baseman, Jelly, had to take a step back. Schwabe runs really well. It was going to be a tough play with the pitcher, Marhefke, covering first base. 
but he did bobble it, so they likely will rule it an E3. So Schwabi does reach, as it seems like he has every plate appearance this entire season so far. Here comes Alan Greer. Steps to the plate. Drove in a run his last time up with an RBI ground out. Marhefke from the stretch. First pitch on the way. Misses upstairs with the fastball for ball one, one and oh. Remember, comment your players of the game on YouTube Live to vote for which player should be interviewed after the game and should be awarded player of the game. Yesterday it was Dominic Parkhurst. Marhefke from the stretch. Pitch on the way. Fastball misses outside. A back pick attempt to first base. Schwabi back in safely. Schwabi had bluff towards second. Was all over the base paths yesterday. Stole several bases. Sabre Dogs stole five plus yesterday as well. Again, Benton Schweinfurth has not been afraid to be aggressive on the base path so far this season. Marhefke from the stretch. There goes Schwabi as the pitch is inside. That's going to get Greer on the front shoulder as he takes off the wristband and jogs towards first base. So Schwabi probably had a stolen base right there. Got a tremendous jump, but it'll be spoiled by the hit by pitch. Greer will reach. And just like that, first and second, nobody out here in the bottom of the third inning for the Sabredogs as they look to add on. The top of the lineup for the Sabredogs, this combination of Caden Schwabi, whether it's Alan Greer today or yesterday when it was Bo Brewer, who's now at the plate in the three spot, has been lethal against this Whiskey Jacks pitching staff. Their ability to put pressure on the base paths and reach base via the walk, a hit, whatever it may be. Here's the first pitch to Brewer. Swing and a miss well out in front of a breaking ball for strike one. 0-1 oh the count. So you got some electrifying speed on the base paths now in Caden Schwabi and Alan Greer. A ball into the gap likely scores Greer from first base. The outfield is playing straight up. Large gaps out to left and right center here at Corbett Field. Just 316 down the left and right field lines, but 356 in the gaps in right center. 410 straight away as the next pitch is on the way. It swung on and fouled off to the right side for strike 2-0-2. Oh two. Brewer, the right-handed hitter, shaking his head after that one. Went after a breaking ball in the dirt. Cued it off to the end of the bat. So now he'll have to protect here with two strikes. Marheski, Marhefki make that. Climbs the hill. Comes set about belt high. Schwabi at second, career at first, nobody out. Here's the 0-2. There goes Schwabi as the pitch is swung on and fouled straight back. Count stays at no balls and two strikes. Again, the Sabredogs not afraid to run here on an 0-2 count. Schwabi was probably anticipating a breaking ball out of the zone. Got a good jump, but it was a pitch over the plate that Brewer had to spoil foul. Infield shifting Brewer to pull. The second baseman Daigle playing straight behind the second base bag. Greer not being held on first by Jelly. Marhefke set from the stretch. A move over to first, no throw. As Schwabi is back in, standing up. So the wind was initially blowing in in the first inning, but towards the bottom of the first and top of the second, it started blowing a little bit towards right center. Not as hard as yesterday. That's awesome. I love that camera angle right Maybe aided the McDowell home run that went that way back in the second inning for the Whiskey Jacks. Sabre Dogs looking for some insurance. 2-1, bottom of the third, first and second, nobody out. There go the runners. The 2-2 is swung on in line to center. Tucker ranging back. He has it played perfectly. Is will camp underneath it to make the catch for out number one. So Schwabi and Greer, who were both running on the pitch, have to retweet, retreat to second and first base. A hard line out for Brewer. He's now 0 for 1. That is also out number one here in the bottom of the third. So here comes the left-handed hitting Drew Miller. He was hit by a pitch his last time up on the front shin. Was stranded at second base as well. DHing tonight after getting the start at first base yesterday. Jordan Williams, the right-handed hitter on deck. Greer at first, Schwabi at second. First pitch on the way, swung in the line to the gap in left center field. Tucker on his horse, he is not gonna get it as it splits the gap and rolls all the way to the wall. Schwabi can walk home. Greer rounding third. Here's the relay to the plate from the shortstop Stitzman. It's up the line. Two runs are in. It's a two-run double for Drew Miller as that doubles the Sabre Dogs lead. It's now 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the third inning. And again, a hard slicing drive off the bat of Drew Miller. Tucker, who covers a lot of ground quite fast out there, could not get to this one as it kept slicing away from him. And once it got down, there was no question that both Schwabi and Greer would score. So the first two RBIs on the year for Miller. It's 4-1 Sabredogs now, one aways. 
He takes his lead from second base. Here comes the right-handed hitting Williams, who drove in a run with a sacrifice fly back in the first inning. Marhefke set, third base side. First pitch on the way is swung on a chop to the shortstop side. Sitzman plays on the long hop, gathers his feet, tosses across, but the throw's not in time. Jordan Williams beats it out, an infield single, showing a lot of speed down the first base line. Stitzman, again, was a little bit too patient with this one, tried to play it on the long hop, shuffled across the diamond, and it obviously took too long as Williams was hustling out of the box, has good speed, so he'll take the infield single. So now it's first and second here with one away in the bottom of the third inning. Excuse me, a good spot here for Ethan Moore, who struck out his last time up. Marefke set. Here's his first pitch, swing and a miss out in front of a breaking ball for strike one. 0-1. Oh and, and again, those are the plays that need to be made, especially for a Sabredogs team that has exploded offensively here out of the gate. You cannot give them any extra chances right here. Miller at second. Williams at first as the next pitch is on the way, and it's taken down and away for ball one. One ball and one strike. Moore struck out swinging his last time up. He's still looking for his first hit of the year. Drove in a run yesterday on a sacrifice fly. The wind now blowing harder towards straightaway center field. Marhefke comes set. Fires the 1-1. One -one. Inside, that's going to hit Moore on the front shoulder. That's the third batter hit in this ball game, the second of this inning. And now the bases are loaded here in the third inning with one away. So a very similar situation to what we saw in the fourth inning yesterday where the Sabredogs put up 10 runs. And if you're Marhefke right here, you know that the Whiskey Jacks are still in this ball game. And you're a ground ball double play away from getting out of this jam. You cannot let this game get away from you, especially here early on. Meanwhile, if you're Declan Buckle, you have an opportunity to clear the bases right here or at least drive in one run with a fly ball. He's 0-for-1, flew it to left, a hard line out his last time up. Marhefke's first pitch on the way is a fastball over the middle third of the plate for strike one. No balls, one strike to count. Buckle drove in a run yesterday with a double down the right field line. Third baseman Bittner playing even with the bag at third. Middle playing back, looking for the double play ball. Jelly also back behind Moore at first base as well. No balls, one strike. Here's the pitch on the way. It's a breaking ball on the outside corner for strike two. 0-2 the count. So two runs so far in this inning for the Sabredogs, courtesy of the two-run double from Drew Miller. He now stands at third base. Williams at second after the infield single. And Moore at first after the hit-by-pitch. Declan Buckle at the plate. Lance McDonald on deck. Marhefke comes set. Winds the 0-2. Swinging a ground ball to short. Sitzman moves to his left. Bobbles it. Recovers. Takes it to the second base back for one and is taken out at second base. It was a hard slide by the base runner and Ethan Moore. So that'll bring a run around a 6-4 fielder's choice. RBI for Buckle is second of the season as he was safe at first. It's now 5-1 Suez Valley. Man, oh man, what an aggressive play by Ethan Moore running down the bases. Again, clean. He slid straight into the bag. The shortstop Stitzman picked it up cleanly initially, it looked like at first, but then bobbled, recovered, is picking it up with his bare hand, took it to the bag and was trying to transition to throw to first, but at the same time, Moore was sliding into him and he somersaulted onto the ground. Looks like he's okay, however. Here's Lance McDonald. As there goes Buckle. The pitch is taken upstairs for a ball. No throw into second by the catcher Stein. So Buckle takes second base without a throw. He's now in scoring position here with two away. So again, three runs in here in the bottom of the third. It's 5-1 to one Sabredogs. McDonald 0 for 1. He struck out his last time up. Mark Hefke fires the 1-0. Swing and a soft fly ball to straightaway center field. Tucker racing in. Going back is the second baseman, Daigle, as he makes the over-the-shoulder backhanded grab, and that will retire the sides. But the Sabredogs pick up three more runs thanks to the two-run double from Drew Miller and the RBI fielder's choice off the bat of Declan Buckle. We get to the top of the fourth inning. Sears Valley leads by 4-5-1. to one. You're listening to Expedition League Baseball live here on the Sears Valley Sabredogs radio network. Saberdog fans, be sure to stop down to OK Automotive in Minot to register for your chance to win a 10K golf cart giveaway. If a Saberdogs player hits a ball through the home run target beyond the left field fence, one lucky fan will drive home in a brand new golf cart courtesy of OK Automotive. Register in store today. Hey Saberdogs, the team has teamed up with Circle Sanitation to bring the fans a Minot Mallard's throwback jersey night. 
The Sabre Dogs will play in these exclusive jerseys while a silent auction will be held throughout the game. The proceeds will go to the Cheering for Chance fundraiser. The team starts at 7.05 and the Dogs will be playing against the Badland Big Sticks. Fourth inning, cruising through this one here as the Sabre Dogs lead 5-1. to one. Again, if you're just tuning in, the Sabre Dogs picked up two runs in the bottom of the first. The Whiskey Jacks one in the top of the second on the Caleb McDowell home run. And the Sabre Dogs answer back with three of their own in the bottom of the third inning. They lead by four. Offense has been a plenty so far for the Sabre Dogs. 16 runs yesterday, five so far through three. It's going to be six, seven, and eight due up here in the Whiskey Jacks order. Here's Houston Fogelstrom. First pitch from LeBlanc on the way is taken upstairs with a fastball for ball one. One to know the count. LeBlanc got into a little bit more trouble last inning but was able to weave out of a jam in which had a couple runners in scoring position. As he turns, kicks and tosses the 1-0. Breaking ball, swung on a slice down the right field line and foul. Count now moves to one ball, one strike. And there's a lot of change in speeds with that pitch right there for LeBron, for LeBlanc. Excuse me. The right-handed hitting Fogelstrom got his foot down. You could see his weight shifting towards the mound as he was trying to hold back as far as he could, or as long as he could. Fouled it off as the next pitch is swung on and popped foul to the right side and out of play. Count quickly moves in favor of LeBlanc, one and two. Fogelstrom flew out to the center fielder Williams his last time up. When the ball has been put in play, very likely, or most of the time, has been in the air. Four flyouts so far as the one two is on the way. Strike three called, he got him. Fastball dotted on the outside corner as LeBlanc racks up strikeout number five through three and one third of an inning's work. Great start to this inning. Fuglestrom now 0 for two. Again, an incredibly good spot. That fastball has some arm side run on it. Bit that outside corner, stuck perfectly by the catcher, McDonald. Here's the first pitch on the way to Stein. It's a breaking ball in the outside corner for strike one. 0-1-1. Stein singled to left field his last time up. Here's the 0-1 from LeBlanc. It's a fastball at the knees for strike two. 0-2. LeBlanc working like a machine right now. Very quickly pounding the strike zone efficiently and often. Longer hold here as he's set third base side. Turns, twists, and tosses the 0-2. Swing and a ground ball hit hard to short. Buckle gobbles it up, smothers it. Gathers his feet, throws across, and it's in time for out number two. A 6-3 put out on that one. A hard hit ball right at Buckle, who's been busy the last couple of days. A lot of ground balls in his direction, and he also is a machine out there at shortstop. Has basically been able to make every single play. That one looks like it ate him up a little bit. Caught him right in the kitchen as he had to smother it with his stomach, but was able to gather himself quickly to make the good throw to first. So here's Cameron Daigle, right-handed hitting second baseman. The pitch on the way is a fastball that misses down and away for ball one. 1-0 the count. Daigle walked back in the second inning. The block set, hesitates, his 1-0. Swinging a broken back ground ball to short. Buckle charges, throws on the run to first in time to retire the side. Declan Buckle been busy tonight at shortstop for the Sabre Dogs is... LeBlanc sets down the side in order for the second time this evening. Running to the bottom of the fourth inning. Sabre Dogs lead at 5-1 to one as you're listening to Expedition League Baseball live here on the Sabre Dogs Radio Network. We all protect what we love. It's instinct. We do everything we can to keep our loved ones safe. And they do everything to keep us safe. Seatbelts save lives. It's an indisputable fact. And buckling up is something we all can do. Buckle up, Dad. Seatbelts save lives. Buckle up. Every trip, every time. Brought to you by the North Dakota Department of Transportation through Vision Zero. 
This is Ethan Moore for the Soros Valley Saber Dogs reminding you that your favorite ball club is on all social media platforms including Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Make sure to follow for starting lineup, score updates, and all our exclusive Saber Dogs content you'll need this summer. Follow us at, at @svsaberdogs and use the hashtag #scodogs. Welcome back to Corbett Field. Bottom half of the fourth inning, 5-1 to one Sabre Dogs. We've got a new pitcher on the mound here for the Whiskey Jacks. It's going to be the right-hander, Jake Anderson, standing at six foot, six feet tall, 185 pounds, out of South Lake, Texas. So you can close the book on Sam Marhefke, who went three innings, allowed five runs, really struggled with his command, hit three batters, and that was a story coming into this ball game, having struggled with command his entire college season. Really couldn't figure it out here tonight as well. And you got to hope with an opportunity here to play summer baseball here in the Expedition League, he can figure out some of the command issues as we move forward here. Meanwhile, for the Sabre Dogs, it's going to be 9-1-2 and two due up here in the order. Jake Paulson, the second baseman, lead it off. Then it'll be the top of the lineup for the fourth time here. Make that the third time, excuse me. We're only in the fourth inning. Is Caden Schwabe, the leadoff man, is on deck. So here does come Jake Paulson. He's 0 for 1. Grounded up to short his last time up. So Anderson climbs the hill. He will be going from the stretch here. So only three innings from Marhefke. The Whiskey Jacks will have to get to their bullpen early again here. So if you're... The Whiskey Jacks right now, you're hoping you can get a deep ball game, a deep outing here from Paulson as the first pitch is on its way. It's a strike on the outside corner, 0-1-1. Paulson looking for his first base hit of the year, 0 for 1 tonight as we mentioned. Open stance from the right side, the 0-1. Swung on and popped up to the right side. Second baseman Daigle ranging onto the cut of the outfield grass. He'll camp underneath it to make the catch for out number one. So a quick out here to start the inning for Jake Anderson here tonight. It's going to bring up the top of the order in Caden Schwabe. Here's Caden Schwabe. He's over, or make that one for two. Tripled in the first. Reached on an error by the first baseman Jelly back in the third inning. Would come around to score as well on the two-run double from Drew Miller. Really has been a spark plug here at the top of this Sabre Dogs lineup. Infield shifting him slightly the pull. Stitzman a couple steps up the middle. The third baseman Bittner. Off the third base bag, a couple steps to his left as the first pitch on the way is a strike, 0-1. Schwabe showing bunt on that one right there. The third baseman, Bittner, before that pitch was about five or six steps back. Now he adjusts and is even with the bag at third. Here's the 0-1 on the way, swing and a foul straight back, 0-1 to the count. And again, we talked about Schwabe's bat-to-ball skills. It was on full display last season when he was with the big sticks. Now the Sabre Dogs able to bring him here and use it to their own advantage. Has four hits thus far, potentially five. If not for that error by Jelly. Facing an 0-2 count here as the pitch from Anderson is on its way. It's a fastball taken up and away for ball one, one and two. So I'll be going with the long pants this evening like the majority of this Sabre Dogs ball club. The only man with the high socks today is Jack Paulson. The 1-2 on the way is swung on its slap to left field. The left fielder drill will have to watch it play on a hop. Schwabe a wide turnaround first to hold there. Textbook hitting right there from Schwabe. Again, a pitch down and away, running out of the strikes and away from the left-handed hitter. Didn't try to do too much with this pitch. Again, just threw the bat out there and slapped it in the left field. So he'll pick up his second hit of the night. He's reached base all three times. It's an open up the year now. He's five for eight. 
Alan Greer now walking to the dish. She's 0 for 1. Grounded up to short. Did drive in Schwabi for the first run of the game for Suarez Valley back in the first. Was hit by a pitch in the third. Also came around to score on the Miller two-run double. There goes Schwabi for second. The pitch is swung on a tap through a vacant right side into right field for a base hit. Schwabi couldn't see it at first. He takes a late turn around second. He'll get in there standing up. What a nice piece of hitting by Alan Greer as the hit and run was on. Again, it was a breaking ball running away from him. Schwabi was taking off with a pitch, so the second baseman Daigle went over to the second base back to cover. And all Greer really did was tap this one to the second base side of the infield. The first baseman Jelly couldn't even make an attempt for it as it was about six, seven feet out of his reach. So speed kills back on the base paths now. Schwabi at third, Greer at first. His first hit of the night. Here's Bo Brewer. Anderson set from the stretch. First base side. There goes Greer for second. The pitch is outside. The throw down to second from Stein is up high. Heading for the plate now is Schwabi. He'll come around to score. It's 6-1. to one. The double steal. First and third trickery. Works for the Sabredogs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Again, Greer taking off. It was a good throw to second by the catcher and Stein. He was ready for it. It was a pitch up and away, a very easy pitch to throw on. As soon as the ball left the hand of Stein, Schwabi took home for home plate. So credit both with a stolen base. The double steal works. One run in here now. 6-1 Sabredogs. Pitch was up and away as well, so one knows the count here on Brewers. The pitch is on its way. It's taken down low ball two to know the count. And this is really the golden setup for the Sabredogs. You have two speedsters, speedsters at the top of the order in Schwabi and Greer who get on base at a fantastic rate and then a very powerful middle of the order as well. Here's the next pitch on the way to strike on the outside corner. Count even out one and one. Infield playing straight up. Excuse me, correction, two and one the count here. Greer, great speed as we mentioned at second base, ready to run. One, one, one run already in as Anderson comes set from the first base side. Here's his pitch on the way, breaking ball in the dirt, smothered by the catcher Stein. Greer took a couple steps towards third base, but will quickly retreat. Again, thank you to those of you tuning in on Mixler and YouTube TV. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Sabredogs YouTube channel. Turn on your alerts as well so you'll know and be notified whenever the Sabredogs game is being broadcasted here on YouTube. Three balls, one strike to count. Here's the pitch on the way. It's inside as Brewer will back out of the way from that one. Four ball, four. Another walk here given up by the Whiskey Jacks pitching staff. That's number one, two, three on the night. Make that two on the night. Also three hit by pitches, so five free passes thus far. Been quite an issue the last couple of nights here for this Whiskey Jacks pitching staff. Drew Miller now up at the plate. He's one for one, a hit by pitch, a run scored, and a two run double. That came back last inning in the third. Anderson from the stretch, his pitch on the way is a fastball that slices the outer edge of the strike zone for strike one. Oh and one the count. So now six runs and five hits, no errors for the Sabredogs. One run on four hits, one error for the Whiskey Jacks. Anderson leans it for the side, first base side. Tall open stance from the left side for Miller. Here's the 0-1. It's swung on and popped up into straightaway left field. Drill ranging to his left towards the gap. He'll make the catch. Faking the tag from second is Greer. He'll take a couple steps and then head back to second base. So that'll be out number two here. Miller retired for the first time tonight. As that'll force Jordan Williams to the plate now with the first and second opportunity here. Driven in a run tonight already with a sack fly back in the first inning. Also showed off some impressive speed in the third after beating out a routine ground ball to the shortstop Stitzman. He would also come around to score. So again, Greer at second, who reached on the single. Brewer at first, who reached on the walk. One run already in on the double steal attempt that brought Schwabi to the plate. Here's the first pitch on the way. It's a fastball in the inside corner for strike one, 0-1. So Williams now this season so far, two for four, four RBIs and a home run, which came yesterday. Really dominant start to the season for him. Anderson comes set, belt tie. 0 1 pitch on the way. Big swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Foul tip held on by the catcher Stein. As the count now moves to no balls and two strikes. So Anderson looking to limit the damage here. One run already in. This ball game still within reach for the Whiskey Jacks, trailing just by five runs. Anderson 
Kicks, fires the 0-2. It's a fastball that misses down away for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Currently no action in the pen for the Whiskey Jacks so far. For the Sabre Dogs, no action as well. Dalton LeBlanc, while he's gotten himself into some difficult jams, has been able to weave out of them. Pitch count still in good shape, more than likely coming out for the fifth inning. Anderson set first base side, fires the 1-2. Change up in the dirt, blocked by the catcher Stein. Heading for third without a contest is Greer. Now heading for second is going to be Brewer, and he'll get there without a throw. Heads up, base running continues for the Sabredongs. This was a pitch in the dirt, blocked by Stein, who is staring at the ball on the ground. As they're going to appeal to second base, not going is Williams, so it will be a ball. But Greer, with his head up, ran towards third base. By the time Stein had picked his head up, Greer was at third base. And then all of a sudden, turned it back, turned his back to the diamond. And Brewer was able to take second without a contest. It's the one-two pitch on the way. He's taken in the dirt, blocked by the catcher Stein for ball two. Two and two. And we talk about the speed for the Sabre Dogs so far this play this year. But it's not only that. It's the base running IQ the awareness to take advantage of an opportunity like that on just a routine ball blocked in the dirt by Stein. Turning a first and second spot to a second and third spot as the 3-2 is on its way and it's inside and it looks like that may have grazed Williams. Either way, it was ball four, so he'll take first base. So now the bases are loaded here with two away as the Sabre Dogs have a fantastic opportunity to break open the floodgates here, up six to one. Runners at every base here with two outs. Here comes Ethan Moore looking to break out. He's 0 for 4 thus far here on the young season. 0 for 1 today, struck out in the first, was hit by a pitch in the third. Anderson comes set, lifts and fires the first pitch. It's a strike about chest high in the middle third of the plate for strike one. 0 and 1. The wind still gently blowing out to straightaway center field. Greer takes his lead from third, Brewer from second, Williams at first. Anderson from the stretch. Here's his 0-1 on the way, swing and a high fly ball out to left field, drill ranging back towards the track, twisting and turning in front of the wall. He's going to make the catch, and that will retire the side. Man, oh man, did Ethan Moore just miss a grand slam right there. Either way, the Sabre Dogs pick up one more run on the double steal that allowed Caden Schwabe to come around and score. They lead it 6-1 to one as we head to the top of the fifth, just about halfway through this one, folks. Sabre Dogs up 6-1. to one. We'll be right back as you're listening to Sabre Dogs Baseball live on the Sabre Dogs Radio. Radio Network. This is Bo Brewer for the Soros Valley Sabre Dogs, reminding you that there is a reason why Slim Chicken hangs the guitars on their walls and plays the blues. It's the same reason why they only serve you 100% all natural chicken tenders. It's the way they like it. There is a reason why they treat you like family and serve food just like you would at home because you deserve it that way. And there's a reason it's made fresh when you order and served hot because that is their promise to you. Come see us at Slim Chickens or order online at slimchickens.com. This is Caden Schwabe, an outfielder for the Surf Valley Sabre Dogs, reminding you that your favorite ball club is on all social media platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Make sure to follow for our starting lineups, score updates, and all of the exclusive Sabre Dogs content you'll need for the summer. Follow us at SV Sabre Dogs and use the hashtag SCODogs. Sabre Dogs as we enter the top half of the fifth inning. One more run in in the fourth. And again, there's been so much to be impressed about here early on in the season. The pitching has been very dependable. The offense has been explosive. The base running has been spectacular. So the Sabre Dogs continue to steal runs from the Whiskey Jacks here, up by five. Here's LeBlanc out for his fifth inning of work as his first pitch on the way to Brandon Tucker is taken up and away for ball one, one and oh. Tucker flew out to center his last time up. Williams was busy out there earlier in the ball game as the next pitch on the way is swung on a chop to third, picked up by Moore, who quickly slings it to first, but it's in the dirt, gets away from Brewer and rolls all the way down the first baseline. Heading for second and getting there, standing up is Tucker. So he'll reach and instantly be placed in scoring position here to open up this top of the fifth inning. It'll likely be an E5 on the third baseman, Moore, who again, looks like he threw that one off of his heels on that play, had to range quickly to his left. Really the only shot the Sabre Dogs had with it was if Moore made the play. Buckle, who was backing it up, would have fielded on the cut of the outfield grass, and Tucker, who runs well, would have likely beaten it out. 
but the throw was a little bit wide towards the right field side of the first base bag, and Brewer could not pick it cleanly. So it'll be an E5 on Moore. Tucker now at second base. Here comes Ethan Stitzman, the leadoff hitter. First pitch on the way is an off-speed pitch in the dirt blocked by McDonald for ball one. 1-0 one the count. Stitzman, one for two, struck out looking in the first, singled back in the third inning. Shortstop Buckle playing on the cut of the outfield grass. More to the third baseman, even with the bag at third. The block from the stretch. Here's his 1-0 on the way. On the outside corner, knee high for strike two. Is taking off for th third on the throwback to the pitcher is Stitzman. So he'll steal a bag right there. As he's now 90 feet away, the pitch was a strike. The catcher, McDonald, lobbed it back to the pitcher, LeBlanc. And Stitzman, with his head up, took off immediately as the ball left out of the hand. So seeing some savvy base running here early on. So the 1-1 is on the way in the dirt, blocked by McDonald for ball two. 2-1, two and, and I alluded to it yesterday. We saw that last season in an extra innings game where Wyatt Setti of the big sticks did the very same thing on second base. Waited for the lob back to the pitcher and took off immediately for third as the 2-1 is on its way. It's a breaking ball in the outside corner for strike two. Two balls, two strikes. So the Whiskey Jacks pulling a trick out of the sleeve of the Sabredogs. Stitzman now 90 feet away. Here's the 2-2 from LeBlanc in the dirt smothered by the catcher McDonald again for ball three, count now runs full. So an early RBI chance here for Stitzman this season. Looking for number one thus far. Third baseman Moore still even with the bag. First baseman Brewer about a couple steps back. Next pitch on the way is swung on and missed for strike three. Well out in front of an off speed pitch for out number one. So strikeout number six on the night for LeBlanc. That's the third swinging as well. Big out right there as that holds Tucker at third base here, still one out. Middle infielders Buckle and Paulson at short and second respectively playing back, so they'll exchange a ground ball for a run. Corners playing even with the bag. As the first pitch on the way is a breaking ball in the dirt, blocked again by McDonald for ball one. One and oh. Bittner 0 for two, struck out in the first, popped out to the first baseman Brewer back in the third. Here's the 1-0 on the way, swing and a miss for strike one. Fastball running away from the right-handed swinging Bittner. Count even at one ball and one strike. Starting to see some action in the bullpen for the Sabre Dogs as a left-hander is starting to toss down there. No action currently in the Whiskey Jacks pen as the next pitch is swung on and driven in the air to deep left field. Schwabe on his horse. He's going to have to watch it fly over his head and hop off the base of the wall. Trotting home is Tucker heading for second with an RBI double is Dean Bittner. And just like that, the Whiskey Jacks are back on the scoreboard. It's 6-2 to two here in the top of the fifth inning. Bittner gave that one a ride. It looked like Schwabe was playing him a little bit shallow here as he had to turn his back to the infield. It was about five, six feet over his head. And with the turf here at Corbett Field, you gotta be careful with those types of plays because the ball often bounces over the wall. But it bounced early enough where it hit off the base of the wall. Either way, it would have been a double as Bittner stands at second base. So give him RBI number one of the season. He's now one for three. That's gonna bring up Jake Jelly to the plate. He's 0 for two. Here's the first pitch on the way. Breaking ball in the dirt, picked by the catcher McDonald for ball one. One ball, no strikes. So, great chance for the Whiskey Jacks to climb back into this one, just trailing by four. Still plenty of time left as we sit here in the top of the fifth inning with one away. Six to two, Sabre Dogs. The block from the stretch, his next pitch is a fastball dotted on the outer edge for strike one. One and one. On deck, going to be Caleb McDowell, who's had a night. He's two for two with a home run and a single. Jelly looking to join the party here. Infield shifting him to pull. Third baseman Moore hugging the line. One ball, one strike. LeBlanc fires the next pitch. Breaking ball misses down and away for ball two, two and one. Outfield playing Jelly about straight up. Fairly deep as well. The block set third base side. 2 1, swung on and cued off the end of the bat, fouled straight back. Two balls, two strikes. Good crowd on hand tonight here for game two of the season. We got about half of the home grandstands behind home plate full. Got the VIP sections down the first base line filled up. Plenty of kids playing with the inflatables down the right field line as well. Again, am I not happy to have the Sabre Dogs back here for the 2021 campaign? The block set third base side. Two balls, two strikes. Runner on second and Bittner dancing over there as the 2-2 two -two is fouled off the thigh of the hitter, Jelly. Count stays at 2-2. Two two. 
But Long has done a really good job of changing speeds. That fastball has some life to it. And appears even faster because he's challenging them with both the changeup and the breaking ball that are, are consistently and significantly slower than that fastball. So he's constantly been able to keep these Whiskey, J Whiskey Jacks bats off balance. Bittner continues to shuffle back and forth at second. The 2-2 is swung on a chop to third. Another chance for Moore. Picks it on the long hop head high. The throw to first is in time for out number two. Holding at second is Bittner at the play. And that's going to bring up Caleb McDowell, a guy that LeBlanc has to be quite careful with right here, not only because it's left on right, but as we mentioned just a moment ago, homered in the second, singled in the third here. Again, you don't necessarily have to challenge him. You have Nolan Drill on deck who swung the bat well yesterday, who's currently 0 for 2. But a lot of right-handed hitters in this Whiskey Jacks lineup. 6-2 Sabredogs, top of the fifth. One run in on the RBI double from Dean Bittner. LeBlanc from the stretch. Pitch on the way, swung on and fouled straight back. McDowell out in front. Owen won the count. So the left-hander continues to warm up in the pen for the Sabredogs. This very well could be the last inning for LeBlanc. Had some good outings with Paris Junior College earlier this year. Went six innings on February 5th where he allowed a run. Five hits and two strikeouts. Seven strikeouts and two and two-thirds of an innings pitched on March 29th. So the next pitch is taken down and away for ball one. One ball, one strike. Currently has tossed four and two-thirds of an innings pitch to struck out six batters. Three swinging, three looking. Count even at one, two away. Bittner takes his lead from second, will be going on contact as LeBlanc now steps off. His time has been called. Infield, shifting the right-handed, hitting McDowell to pull. Good arms in the outfield, Schwabe in left, Williams in center, Greer in right. LeBlanc set third base side. Here's his 2-1 on the way, swing and a miss, pulled the string right there. Count now moves to two balls and two strikes. So a big spot right here. Whiskey Jacks answering back with one run already, threatening with one more as Bittner's on second base. LeBlanc looking for a lucky number seven on his line score. He's set. The 2-2 on the way. Misses up and away for ball three. Count runs full. LeBlanc set from the stretch. Here's his two-strike pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Four strike three. Foul tip held on by McDonald. And that will retire the side. Seven strikeouts for LeBlanc as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. One run in for the Whiskey Jacks. Saberdogs lead by four. Stay tuned. We got a good one here tonight, folks. We'll be right back. Start planning your summer road trips with a brand new camper and truck. Head to Four Bears Casino now, play your favorite slots, and earn entries for their July 3rd truck and camper giveaway. It's your chance to win a decked out camper and 2021 pickup with full towing package. Plus, get your tickets for Dwight Yoakam, live in concert June 19th, and enjoy water fun on a yacht tour of Lake Sakakawea or a splash in their water park. Check out all the fun on their website, all at Four Bears Casino and Lodge, four miles west of Newtown. The Service Valley Saberdogs are back for another fan giveaway. Fridays are always for our fans. This giveaway will be a water bottle brought to you by the North Star Community Credit Union. The first 500 fans to attend will get one of these Saberdog branded water bottles. Come out to watch the Service Valley Saberdogs play against the Spearfish Sasquatch at 7.05 at Corbett Field and be a receiver of the giveaway. Six to two Saber Dogs as we enter the bottom half of the fifth inning live here at Corbett Field. Game two of the 2021 Expedition League season. The Saber Dogs took game one yesterday, 16 to two. Currently lead six to two here. Seven, eight, and nine due up here against the right-hander Jake Anderson. Here's Declan Buckle to lead it off as his first pitch on his, is on the way. It's swung on a miss for strike one, 0 and one. Remember, for those of you watching online on YouTube Live or listening on Mixler, Comment your player of the game. That's who we'll interview for the post-game show. Plenty to choose, run, choose from thus far. As the next pitch is on its way, it's in the dirt. Picked by the catcher Stein for ball one. One ball, one strike. You could go with Caden Schwabe, who tripled, scored a run, stole home plate as well. 
LeBlanc has been very nice on the mound as well as the next pitch is on its way. It's a strike on the outside corner count, quickly moves 2-0-2. Drew Miller, another likely candidate so far, has reached base twice, also drove in two with a double to left center in the third. Jake Anderson, the right-hander, comes set. Here's the 0-2 on the way, swing, and it's sliced fouled on the right field line. Count stays at no balls and two strikes. Sun's starting to set here at Corbett Field. Overcast evening, lights have been in play this entire night. Anderson set for his base side, the 0-2 delivery again. Strike three, Caldy rung him up on an off-speed pitch over the middle third of the plate. So strikeout number one for Anderson, out number one as well to open up the bottom of the fifth inning. Third time Buckle has been retired, he's now 0 for three. So they'll bring up the catcher, Lance McDonald, looking to pick up his first hit of the evening, he's 0 for two. Saberdog sent six men to the plate in the first, brought in two runs. Were set down and ordered in the second, brought eight to the plate in the third where they scored three. Seven last inning in the fourth where they scored one. They lead it 6-2. Here's the first pitch to McDonald on the way. It's a breaking ball over the heart of the plate for strike one, 0-1. McDonald once again swinging from the left side with Anderson, the right-hander, on the mound. Anderson comes set first base side. Here's his 0-1. It misses up and away, ball one. One and one the count. Infield playing McDonald straight up. Outfield, same story. Wind still blowing out towards right center, so if McDonald could elevate one, may have a chance to sneak one out of here as the next pitch is cut on a missed for strike two. 0 oh and two the count. Make that one and two the count, excuse me. Anderson leans in, first base side. He comes set. Here's the one, two on the way. Reached out and pokes it foul. Out of play down the left field line. Count stays at one and two. Looked like an off speed pitch right there. Running away from him. Good job sitting back as long as he could as he just stuck the bat out there and cued it off the end of the bat. Anderson leans it for the sign. Nods his head in agreement with Stein. He comes set. Here's his one, two. Buries a change up in the dirt for ball two. Count now even at two balls and two strikes. Seeing some movement in the Whiskey Jacks pen currently. No one throwing, some guys getting stretched. We saw a left-hander getting up in the Sabre Dogs pen earlier tonight. Could be a candidate to come out here in the sixth inning. Top of the sixth inning once this inning is over. Here's the 2-2 two -two on the way to McDonald. It swung on and popped foul again. Count stays the same at 2-2. Two two. Great battle here from McDonald again. Fighting off plenty of pitches to stay alive. Anderson doing a good job of changing speeds here as he comes set again. First base side of the rubber is 2-2 two -two on the way. Barry's a breaking ball in the dirt for ball three. Count now runs full at three balls and two strikes. And after the strikeout to Buckle, which happened fairly quickly, this is a nice long at-bat for McDonald. No matter what the result is, will be a quality at-bat, getting that pitch count up for Anderson here. Here's the payoff pitch on the way. It's taken up and away for ball four. So tip of the cap for McDonald, who draws the walk. He'll reach first base for the first time in a Sabre Dogs uniform. Here with one away in the bottom of the fifth inning. That's going to bring up the nine-hole hitter in Jack Paulson. Paulson 0 for 2. A ground to short, a pop to second. Also looking for his first Sabre Dogs hit. Infield will play him in double play depth. The second baseman Daigle ranging up the middle. The third baseman Bittner. A couple steps off the third base bag, even with it as well. Here's the first pitch on the way. Fastball up and away for ball one. 1-0. As we mentioned, McDonald has very good speed at first base. And knowing the frequency in which Schweinfurst has sent Sabre Dogs base runners so far through a game and a half or so, wouldn't be surprised if we see McDonald run here. The 1-0 on the way is outside. Pick back quick snap throw to first base. No. McDonald back in safely. The, oh, the, oh, the stats. The on deck going to be Caden Schwabe. The top of the order here is we're hovering towards the fourth time through the order here for the Sabre Dogs. Alan Greer in the hole. Two balls, no strikes to count here on Paulson as he steps back into the batter's box. Anderson set from the stretch. Here's his 2-0. There goes McDonald, pitch down and away. Throwing on the second from Stein on a hop on the third base side of the bag. It's not in time. Right on cue, a stolen base for Lance McDonald. Got a great jump. Perfect pitch to run on. And now he's at second base here with one away. The pitch was called a strike, so now two and one is the count here on Paulson. Again, a one-hop throw from the catcher Stein to the third base side of the second base bag. 
So no chance to apply the tag in time on McDonald. Anderson's pitch on the way, misses down and away for ball three. Good pick by the catcher Stein, who ranged to his right. To keep that in front of him and hold McDonald at second. Count moves to three and one here, a hitter's count for Paulson. Schwabi looming on deck, top of the order here as Anderson leans in again, comes set. Three balls, one strike to count, 6-2 Sabredogs, bottom of the fifth. The pitch on the way is swung on and fouled straight back. Count now moves to three balls and two strikes here. After this three-game series, wraps up tomorrow evening between the Sabredogs and the Whiskey Jacks. It'll be the Big Sticks, the rival Big Sticks, that will come into town Friday and Saturday for a quick two-game set. So the 3-2 is on its way. It's swung and it popped up to the right side of the infield. The second baseman, Dangle, is ranging onto the cut of the outfield grass. He'll make the catch for out number two. Second time, Paulson has popped out to Daigle at second base. And that'll bring up the top of the order in Schwabe up with two outs. After that two-game series with the Big Sticks, the Sabredogs will have two days off, Sunday and Monday. Then we'll head to Casper, Wyoming, to play the Horseheads for the first time since 2019. A three-game road trip for them. Then they'll head back here to Corbett for a three-game series here against the Spearfish Sasquatch. Here's Schwabe having a good day. Reach base all three times, two for three with a triple, a single, and a stolen base as the first pitch is on the way. It's taken outside and low with a fastball for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Schwabe drove in a run yesterday with a double. Another chance for him right here. McDonald, great speed at second, will be going on contact here with two away. Anderson, long look into his catcher, Stein, as he now comes set, slightly closed off. Here's the 1-0 to Schwabe, swing and it's fouled straight back. Count even at one ball, one strike. As mentioned earlier, make sure to comment your player of the game on both the YouTube live comment section as well as the Mixler comment section. That'll be our player of the game and our post-game interview. Caden Schwabe, one of the many candidates thus far here tonight. Chance to add to his campaign with a base hit right here. McDonald takes his walking lead from second. Anderson set from the first base side. Count even at one, two away. Pitch on the way. Fastball taken up and away for ball two. Two and one the count. Six, two Sabredogs, bottom of the fifth inning. Two away here as we continue to see action in the pen for the Whiskey Jacks. No action in the pen currently for the Sabredogs. Pretty chilly night, about 54 degrees at first pitch. Definitely has cooled off a little bit more here as we're in the fifth inning. Just about 826 local time. Here's the next pitch on the way to Schwabe. It's taken up and away for ball three. So now three and one is the count. On deck, Alan Greer, then Bo Brewer to follow. McDonald takes his lead from second after reaching on the walk, then stealing just a couple moments ago. Anderson has one strikeout in this inning so far that came to buckle lo looking to open up the frame. Here's the 3-1 on the way. It's in the dirt for ball four, so Schwabe will take his base. The fourth time he's reached today in his many plate appearances. So now it's a first and second spot here with two outs and another free pass for the Sabredogs. Second walk of the inning. Fourth in the last two innings. And fifth on the night from the Whiskey Jacks pick pitching staff. About the halfway mark to the walk total they put up last night as they walked 10 Sabredogs hitters. Adding to the pile, they've also hit three Sabredogs batters tonight. Two outs, first and second. McDonald at second, Schwabe at first. Here's Alan Greer. He's one for two as the first pitch is on its way. It's taken down low for ball one, one and oh. Greer's last time up, singled through a vacant four hole as it was a hit and run with Schwabe on first base. The second baseman, Daigle, had to go cover the second base back. Greer softly swung and snuck a ground ball through the right side of the infield to allow Schwabe to head to third base. Gray would also steal a base as well as third of the year. One ball, no strikes. Here's the pitch on the way. Breaking ball on the outside corner for strike one. Count now even at one. Two runs on five hits, an error for the Whiskey Jacks. Six runs on five hits, no errors for the Sabredogs. Gray wearing the socks up tonight. The solid blue tube socks, no piping like we saw with Paulson. 
One ball, one strike. Pitch on the way. Breaking ball slides outside for ball two. Two and one the count. We're going with the Columbia cleats again like he did last night. Two white arm sleeves. Got a lot of swagger at the plate. A lot of confidence as well. Swinging a dark stained Marucci bat as he carries the bat above his right shoulder, waving it back and forth, waiting patiently for Anderson to come set. He's ahead 2-1. Anderson's pitch on the way. Misses inside for ball three. Three balls, one strike to count. So a hitter's count for Greer here. Again, we talked about the struggle of command for the Whiskey Jacks. Knowing that Anderson doesn't want to load the bases, Greer may get a very, very good pitch to hit here. McDonald at second. Schwabe at first. Good speed on the base path. 6-2 Sabre Dogs. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Anderson set first base side. Here's his 3-1 on its way. Big swing and a miss on a fastball on the outside corner. Count now runs full at three balls and two strikes. Greer got a good pitch to hit right there. Looked like just a little bit late on it. So now both runners will get head starts at first base here with three and two the count and two away. Anderson waves his glove in the air asking for his signs again from Stein. Going through multiple with McDonald on second base. Three balls, two strikes. There go the runners. The pitch on the way is taken down and in for ball four. Third walk of the inning. In fact, every base runner has reached via the free pass this inning. The bases are now loaded once again here for the Sabre Dogs and a chance for Bo Brewer to break this one wide open. The catcher, Stein, going out to talk to his pitcher, Jake Anderson, and again, got to two strikes on Greer. A tough hitter to strike out. Got to imagine the conversation is being highlighted by get ahead right here. Allow Brewer to put the ball in play and have your defense help you out. Again, you don't want to make a mistake, especially with the bases loaded with Bo Brewer at the plate, who is quite a threat here. But trailing by four, the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks are still very well in this ball game. So if Anderson can get out of this jam, he might be able to spark some momentum for the offense coming up into the top of the six, where they'll have five, six, and seven due up. So here comes Bo Brewer. He's 0 for 1. Two walks and a fly to center. He's driven in one run this year that came yesterday on a sack fly. As the first pitch is on its way. It's a fastball taken up and away for ball 1, 1 and 0. Again, the base runners. McDonald on third, who reached via the walk, still second. Schwabe at second base, who reached via the walk. And Greer, who reached via a walk of his own at first base. All have electric speed. Brewer ahead, one ball, no strikes. Here's Anderson's pitch on the way. It's a strike on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Brewer did not like the call as he takes a step out of the box. A deep breath. 6-2 Sabre Dogs. Bottom of the fifth inning. Anderson leans in for the sign. First base side, he comes set. Here's the 1-1 one, one on the way. Breaking ball on the outside corner for strike two. At the knees, really good spot from Anderson. One ball, two strikes to count. On deck for the Sabre Dogs, if it could get that far, is the left-handed hitting Drew Miller, who drove in two earlier on the two-run double to left center. Brewer digs back in. Anderson leads in for the sign, first base side. He comes set, belt high. Here's the one-two on away. Swing and a pop-up, foul territory. The catcher, Stein, throws his mask Hovers towards the third base batter's box as he'll make the catch with one hand, and that will retire the side. So the Sabre Dogs strand the bases loaded here in the bottom of the fifth inning. We're heading to the top of the sixth. Sabre Dogs lead four, six to two. In times like these, it's good to know there's a place where people know who you are, no matter how long you've been gone. A place where the smells of home cooking are still in the air. Where a simple wave warms your heart. And sharing stories with family, friends, and your community is just a way of life. Yes, in times like these, it's good to be home. Farmers Union Insurance. Protecting what's important in life. The Glenburn Fire Department will be joining the Sirs Valley Sabre Dogs at Corbett Field this Thursday for passive boot night in an effort to raise money to help them recover from a devastating fire at their station. As a community, let's show our support for the fire department. The game starts at 7.05 against the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks.
Dogs entering the top half of the sixth inning. We have a new pitcher on the bump for the Sabre Dogs. Sticking with the southpaw, it's going to be Will Castle out of Ankeny, Iowa, six foot. Product of Des Moines Area Community College. So you can close the door on Dalton LeBlanc, who is very, very good tonight. Five innings of two run ball, really kept the Sabre Dogs in this game, got plenty of run support, is in line for the win. If the Sabre Dogs relief staff can hold on to it. It's going to be five, six, and seven due up for Wheat City in this inning. Nolan Drill, Houston Fogelstrom, and Rhett Stein. Six to two Sabre Dogs. They stranded the bases loaded in the bottom of the fifth inning after three walks. It was Bo Brewer at the plate, quite a daunting hitter who popped up to the catcher in Stein to retire the side. So Castle leans it for the side. This will be his first pitch he's ever thrown to McDonald as he comes set from the stretch. His first pitch on the way is fouled off the umpire straight back. Count moves to no balls and one strike. Have, today's a very special day, not just because Sabre Dogs baseball's back, game two. It's also our assistant GM, Brett Schweitzer's birthday. And if you don't know Brett Schweitzer, you can at least thank him for the wonderful jerseys that the Sabre Dogs are sporting tonight. Is the 0-1 pitch, it's on its way. It misses, no, it's a strike on the inside corner, excuse me. Count moves to 0 and 2. We talked about it a little bit yesterday. Plenty of new uniform combinations. The Sabre Dogs going with the red jerseys this evening with the white bottoms. Sported the Columbia blue tops with the Columbia blue bottoms yesterday. Castle ahead 0 and 2. The pitch on its way. Swing and a ground ball right up the box into straightaway center field for a base hit. So good start for the Whiskey Jacks as Nolan Drill picks up his first hit of the night, fourth on the season. Let's open up this top of the sixth inning. Not only that, but our producer, Ballard Ackaway, his father is celebrating a birthday today as well. So happy birthday to Mr. Ackaway. Quite a special day, May 26th. Is, is, am, am, am I right, Ballard? Yes, you're right. You're correct. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we can hear correct. you. We have you're you correct. in here. Would you like to wish your father a happy birthday? Yes, happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday. I hope it was a great one. I hope you played a lot of golf and uh, are eating a good dinner right now. First pitch from Castle on the way. Swing and a miss. Vicious rip from Fogelstrom for strike one. 0-1. Oh oh, Always a special day. Always a special day. Fogelstrom 0 for 2 today. A fly to center. A strikeout looking back in the fourth inning. Drill takes his lead from first base. As Castle comes set. Next pitch is a strike on the outside corner. 0-2 oh the count. So Castle getting ahead with two strikes again here. Again, Drill hit a hard comebacker right at him. Off the mound that trickled into center field. Vogelstrom has plenty of room to work with here ahead 0-2. He's set, third base side, the 0-2 is swung on and fly to right field, fairly deep. His Greer camps underneath it about five feet in front of the track. He'll make the catch for out number one. Drill will retreat to first base. Here comes Rhett Stein, the catcher, to the dish. He's one for two, a single and a ground to short. So Castle, the fourth pitcher to appear in a Sabre Dogs uniform this season yesterday. Of course, it was Dominic Parkhurst who started, then Hammerly who followed in relief with two dominant innings. And the Sabre Dogs had LeBlanc start today. Castle to follow is the first pitch on the way here to Stein. Misses down and in for ball one, one and zero. Oh. For the Whiskey Jacks, it's been quite the different story. They used four pitchers yesterday: Pete Meyer, Klee, Moffitt, and Harbin. And today, and today, have used Marhefki and Anderson. Six pitchers in total thus far. The 1-0 is inside as it almost hits Stein as he backs away, turns his shoulder towards the backstop. Count quickly moves to 2-0 and oh now. Looks like Castle overthrew a fastball right there. Infield and double play depth. That's buckled to shortstop. Paulson, the second baseman, third baseman more even with the back. Here's the 2-0. Misses down and away for ball three. 3-0 three oh the count. Wind still blowing out towards straightaway center field. Castle toes the rubber again, looking to climb back into this one. Here's the 3-0 pitch on the way. It is up and away, four ball four. So another base runner here in the top half of the sixth inning for the Whiskey Jacks. Tremendous opportunity for them to get back into this ball game. First and second with one away. It's going to bring up the second baseman and Cameron Daigle. He's 0 for 1, walked in the second inning, grounded out to short his last time up. And again, the Whiskey Jacks have had plenty of opportunities with runners on base in this ballgame. Haven't really been able to check in. The only run scoring on the home run from McDowell. And then in the fifth inning as well on the double, courtesy of Dean Bittner. 
First pitch on the way is well inside behind the hitter, Daigle, as it rolls to the backstop. Heading for third is Drill. Stein right behind him trots into second base, so that'll be a wild pitch from Castle. And just like that, two runners in scoring position here for the Whiskey Jacks. Good opportunity for Daigle, and again, a base hit right here. Potentially scores two runs. All of a sudden, you have a two-run deficit. We got a brand-new ball game. It feels like the Whiskey Jacks are well out of this one just because the Sabredogs have been able to consistently add on. You pair that with the fact that they won by 14 yesterday, but again, one swing of the bat. Got a brand new ball game. Here's the 1-0 on the way. Misses up and away ball 2-2-0. Two, two Castle really struggling with his command right here. Base runners drill at third, Stein at second. One away. Here comes head coach Benton Schweinfurth to the mound. Schweinfurth, a pitching coach as well, and has passed a former college pitcher as well, so you got to imagine he has some great insight right here as he talks to his pitcher right now, just trying to calm him down, slow things down, maybe talking through some mechanical adjustments as well. It looks like Castle is really struggling to find the strike zone, overthrew a breaking ball earlier, missed with a fastball well up and away. Maybe just give him some time to relax and regain himself here as well. Again, one away, first and second, 6-2 to two, Suris Valley here in the top of the sixth inning. Whiskey Jack's threatening for more. Thank you for those of you tuning in on Mixler and YouTube Live. Make sure to comment your player of the game. It'll be our post-game interview. The player with the most votes will be rewarded that glory for the night is the first pitch, or to make that the 2-0 pitch is on its way. It's taken down and in for ball three. Three balls, no strikes. So Castle's going to have to find the strike zone here. Does have a bag open. If he were to put Daigle on, it would load the bases for Brandon Tucker. Castle from the stretch, 3-0. Strike over the heart of the plate, 3-1. So still a hitter's count for Daigle right here. He's hitless thus far this season, 0-4. for 4. 0 for 1 today, a walk and a ground to short. Like they have all night, Paulson and Buckle, the middle infielders playing back, will give up a ground out for a run here. Here's the 3-1 on the way. It's a strike on the inside corner. Count now runs full. Daigle turned towards his third base dugout, was ready to toss the ball, make that the bat back towards his dugout, but we'll have to stay in that right-hander's batter's box and protect right here. Count now full. Three balls, two strikes, second and third, one away. Six to two Sabredogs, top of the sixth. Payoff pitch on its way. He's in the dirt. Four ball fours. It's blocked by the catcher, McDonald. He plucks it up and tosses it back to his pitcher. Back-to-back -back walks here, surrendered by Castle. Now the bases are loaded here, and all of a sudden, we have the tying run coming to the plate here for Wheat City. In the hands of Brandon Tucker here, the nine-hole hitter. Making things even more difficult for Castle and the Sabredogs. You have, of course, the top of the lineup looming on deck in Ethan Stitzman. The base runners again, Drill at third, Stein at second, Daigle at first base. Corners about even with the bag. The first base from Brewer a couple steps behind the bag now. Middle infielders playing back in double play depth. First pitch on the way is inside. Almost hits Tucker as he turns his shoulder to the backstop. 1-0 the count. Castle, Castle make that really struggling to find the strike zone right here. No one currently, or makes that, excuse me, make that a right-hander currently tossing in the pen right now. Doesn't look to be too urgent so far. Looks like he's throwing some pilo balls right now. As the 1-0 is on the way, it's swung in the line down the right field line. That is going to get down for a base hit and roll all the way to the wall. Drill will score right behind him, Stein. Daigle getting the wave around. Here's the relay. It's going to be cut off by the second baseman, Paulson, as Tucker slides in the third base with a bases clearing triple. And all of a sudden, it's a 6-5 ball game here in the top of the sixth inning. Bases clearing triple, all runs score. What a piece of hitting, a 1-0 pitch that he sliced down the right field line. The right fielder, Greer, was shading towards right center, had to go full sprint. It took him a while to get the ball back out. And there is no question that all three runs was, were, were able to score as Daigle, who is at first base, has good speed. And now the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks have the tying run at third base here with one away. And the top of their order coming up, not what the Sabredogs were expecting after entering the top of the sixth. Castle now set, infield drawn in. First pitch, it's a strike with a breaking ball on in the inside corner. 0-1 oh, the count. So the first time the infield has been drawn in this season for the Sabredogs here. Again, trying to cut down the run at the plate with one away. If the runner at third and Tucker were to go on contact, of course, with nobody on first, it would be a tag play. As the next pitch is upstairs for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Outfield about straight up. Got good arms in the outfield. The best is to be either between Greer and Williams, who are in right and center. Schwabi has a good arm as well. 
Castle leads it for the sign. Count even out one. One run lead down for the Sabredogs. Was once four as the next pitch is taken in and low for ball two. Two and one the count. On deck, it's going to be the two hole hitter, Dean Bittner, then Jake Jelly to follow here. Due up for the Sabredogs in the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be four, five, and six. Miller, Williams, and more. Castle set head high. From the stretch is 2 1. Swing and a line drive, slicing down the right field line. It will hook foul. So that'll be strike two here. Again, a good piece of hitting. A fastball running away from the right-handed swinging Stitzman. Poked the bat out there and hit a soft line drive down the right field line. He'll have to pick up his back, bat and head back to the right-hander's batter's box here. Again, if Castle can retire Stitzman via the strikeout or a popout or a groundout that doesn't score Tucker, that would be a huge victory as the infield would then get to play back. Again, obviously playing the infield in to try and cut down the run at the plate, but what makes that difficult is a hard ground ball not right at not right at one of the any, any of the infielders, likely gets through for a base hit and an RBI. Castle set, two and two the count, tying run 90 feet away. Pitch on the way, is just a bit inside with the breaking ball for ball three, three and two the count. Castle really struggling with his command here. Two walks already, a ball away from number three. Perfect spot for his first strikeout as a Sabre dog. Stitzman has struck out twice today, once looking in the first, swinging in the fifth. Castle comes set. Here's his 3-2 on the way. Swing and a foul straight back. Count stays at 3-2. For the Sabre Dogs, it's been quite comfortable so far this season to the first game and a half or so. This is definitely the most high-pressure situation they have faced so far. Again, just don't want to let this game get away from them here. Still have a 6-5 lead here in the top of the sixth inning. Tucker, the runner at third base, represents the tying run. Made this a one-run game with a bases clearing three-run triple. Here's the 3-2 pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Four strike three. Three-quarter hack as Stitzman chased a fastball well up and out of the strike zone for a huge out number two. Strikeout number one in the Sabredog career of Castle, and it could not have come at a better time. So here comes Dean Bittner. It's now going to take a base hit from Bittner or a pitch to the backstop to score Tucker from third base. Infield now playing back. Here's the pitch on the way. It's a breaking ball in the dirt blocked by McDonald. He's been good back there tonight. One ball, no strikes. Now 6-5 Sabre Dogs, three runs in this inning. As Castle climbs the hill, looking to limit the damage to three. He comes set, third base side. Kicks, fires the 1-0. Well outside, nice grab by the catcher McDonald as he... Held on to that one on just the edge of the laces of his glove right there as he was set up inside, had to reach all the way across his body to reel that one in. That holds the tying run in Tucker at third base. So a hitter's count for Bittner, 2-0 the count. Castle set. Here's his 2-0 delivery on the way. Swing and a high fly ball in the center field. Williams takes a couple steps back towards his right. Towards left center field, he'll make the catch and that will retire the side. However... The Whiskey Jacks pick up three runs on the three-run bases-clearing triple from Brandon Tucker. We're heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. We got a ball game here at Corbett Field as the Sabre Dogs lead it 6-5. to five. Right. Sabre Dog fans, be sure to stop down to Capital RV in Minot to register for your chance to win a 15K camper giveaway. If a Sabre Dogs player hits a ball through the home run target beyond the left field fence, one lucky fan will drive home with a brand new camper courtesy of Capital RV. Register in store today. The Sabre Dogs have teamed up with Don Bissett Motors to bring you Guns and Hoses Specialty Jersey Night. The players will play in these exclusive jerseys while a silent auction will be held throughout the game. There will also be a pregame softball scrimmage between the Minot Fire Department and the Source Valley Fraternal Order of Police. Game time for the scrimmage is at 5.15. The team will also be hosting superstars for some family fun entertainment. Come on out to the field to be part of the fun and watch the Sabre Dogs take on the Spearfish Sasquatch at 7.05.
Welcome back to Corbett Field. Six to five Sabredogs as we enter the bottom half of the sixth inning. New pitcher on the mound here for the Witt City Whiskey Jacks. It's going to be a right-hander, Roblin Blade, out of Riverton, Utah. Stands at six foot to 175 pounds. The third pitcher of the night for Wheat City. The first right-hander. He's going to get four, five, and six in the order. Drew Miller, Jordan Williams, and Ethan Moore. Blade from the stretch. First pitch is a bit low for ball one with a fastball. One ball, no strikes the count here. So again, the three-run triple from Tucker to clear the bases has made this a one-run game. Miller, a tall left-handed hitter. The 1-0 is swung on its slice down the left field line and foul for strike one. One ball, one strike. We see continued action in the pen down the right field line. Our right-hander starting to get warmed up here after Castle struggled a lot with his command back in that sixth inning, walking three batters and then giving up that triple as well. Correction, two batters he walked to give up a hit to load the bases, and then the base is clearing triple as the next pitch is swung on and fouled straight back for strike two, one and two the count. Miller having a good night so far, one for two, hit by a pitch, a double back in the third inning, fly to left back in the fourth, that double did drive in two runs. And that one extra run on that double is the deciding run right now, six to five here in the bottom of the sixth. Blade ahead, one ball, two strikes, he's set first base side of the rubber, catcher Stein setting up away, Hesitation is the one. Two is cut on a missed four strike three. Blew him by, blew him away. Make that with a fastball. Good start for Blade here as he strikes out the first batter he faces here in the 2021 season. Here comes Jordan Williams to the plate. He's having a good day as well. He's had a productive at bat every time he's reached the plate. Made that make that come to the plate. He had a sack fly to center in the first. Good for RBI number four. An infield single that he beat out on a routine ground ball to the shortstop Stitzman and then walked back in the fourth inning. So this will be his second at-bat, fourth plate appearance as the first pitch is taken down away for ball one, one and oh the count. Seeing a right-hander start to toss down in the pen for the Whiskey Jacks as well. Doesn't look too urgent down there, however. Infield playing, Williams slightly to pull the second baseman, Daigle a couple steps up the middle. The 1-0 is a big swing and a miss for strike one as Williams hops up in the air after swinging the bat. Count even out one ball and one strike. Played a tall right-handed pitcher as his glove on his chest as he leans it for the sign. Now he comes set about belt tie. Kicks, fires the 1-1 delivery. is taken down low for ball two. Two and one the count. On deck it'll be Ethan Moore. Declan Buckle in the hole. For Buckle, he is let off in every inning that he has come to the plate here. So if Williams or Moore can get a base hit, he may have an opportunity to come to the dish. The, or excuse me, correction. He actually came up to the plate with runs to the corners in the third. As the next pitch is caught out and missed for strike two, two and two. That's where he grounded out to shortstop. It was a 6-4 fielder's choice that was able to bring around a run to score for his second RBI of the year. Williams looking to reach base for the third straight plate appearance. Counting even at two, Blade comes set, belt tie, first base side. Long hold, deep breath, lifts. Pitches the 2-2. Bring him on the dirt, blocked by Stein. An appeal over to first. First base umpire Anthony Atkinson says he does not go. Count now moves to three balls and two strikes. Good pitch from Blade right there. Again, a breaking ball in the dirt. The catcher Stein had to range to his right to block it. Williams made an attempt at it, but was able to hold back, according to Atkinson. Outfield straight up, infield. Shifting him the pole. Three balls, two strikes, one away. Wide open stance for Williams. Blade. Lifts and deals the 3-2. Same pitch in the dirt, taken four ball four. So another walk for Williams, his second in his many plate appearances. He has now reached in three consecutive plate appearances. The Sabre Dogs have some much needed insurance now in first base here with one away. And that's gonna bring up Ethan Moore, the third baseman. Moore 0 for two, struck out swinging in the first inning, was hit by a pitch in the third, one of three Sabre Dogs to be hit by a pitch today. And flew out to left and almost Almost left the yard for a grand slam. Again, it was a high, majestic, towering fly ball out to the track in left field. Missed it by about five, six feet or so. First pitch on the way is a fastball taken upstairs for ball one, one and oh. And with the win tonight, it isn't as aggressive as it was yesterday, but it still played a role. The left fielder drill started sprinting towards the track, had the twist and turn as he almost misread it. He was able to make the catch in front of the wall to take away what could have been couple RBIs as William fakes the steal attempt. The pitch is taken upstairs. They'll make that a strike as he went around talking about more. Home plate umpire George Tyree calling that 
right there. So the count moves to one and one. The runner on first base in Williams was faking the steal attempt, which forced the catcher Stein to pop up and almost make a move to first base as the pitcher and Blade makes a first move to first base now, back in safely as Williams. So you could tell the Sabre Dogs have really gotten the heads of this pitching staff and really the defense of this Whiskey Jacks team, stealing bases left and right here, have been more than aggressive and more than successful so far. Blade comes set again, belt tie, count even out one, one away. Long hold here. There goes Williams, good jump, pitch swung on a miss. Throw down from Stein is on a hop, tag applied, is in time to get Williams for out number two. So the first time a Sabre Dog has been caught stealing tonight. Again, Williams got a good jump. Stein taking advantage of the turf here at Corbett Field through a one hop strike to his second baseman Daigle. Williams tried to slide to the outside part of the second base bag, but Daigle was able to apply the tag in time. So two away now, base is empty, one and to the count on Moore. Here's the pitch on the way. Strike three, called, he got him. Frozen with a fastball on the inside corner. Moore does not like it, but he'll have to head back to the dugout. That will retire the side. The Sabre Dogs do allow one base runner to reach, but it was Williams who got caught stealing. So Blaine, in his first inning of work, is able to set down Sirs Valley in order. We head to the top of the seventh. Six to five Sabre Dogs live from Corbett Field. You're listening to Sabre Dogs Baseball and Expedition League Baseball live on the Sirs Valley Sabre Dogs Radio Network. In times like these, it's good to know there's a place where people know who you are, no matter how long you've been gone. A place where the smells of home cooking are still in the air, where a simple wave warms your heart, and sharing stories with family, friends, and your community is just a way of life. Yes, in times like these, it's good to be home. Farmers Union Insurance, protecting what's important in life. This is Declan Buckle, shortstop for the Sears Valley Sabre Dogs, with a message to you from Four Bears Casino. Four Bears is excited to welcome you aboard as they have plenty of fun events planned for the summer, including Dwight Yoakam on June 19th. They're now open seven days a week and are giving away a brand new Ford truck and camper on July 3rd. Not only that, but their water park opens June 15th, and you can take a cruise or book a private party this summer on their luxury yacht. Go to fourbearscasino.com for complete hours and more details. Corbett Field back in the back third of this ball game now at 6-5 Sabre Dogs after the three-run triple from Brandon Tucker to clear the bases and make this a one-run deficit for the Whiskey Jacks. It's going to be a new pitcher on the mound for the Sabre Dogs, right-hander Shane Sinclair. Product of Spokane Falls Community College stands at six feet tall, 175 pounds. In relief of Castle, who really struggled in this ball game, was able to battle through it and keep this a one-run lead for the Sabre Dogs, however. So if you're betting Schweinfurt, you're hoping your bullpen can hold on here in the back end of this ball game. Sinclair had a fun moment before the ball game today. Is all the festivities that before in the pregame show at Corbett Field ended a bit early, so the players had some extra time before first pitch at 7.05. So there was a standoff after the national anthem down the first and third base lines. Sinclair was the representative for the Sabredongs, of course, and it was Rob Blade. How about that? Just noticing that now. Rob Blade was the representative for the Whiskey Jacks. So the two pitchers on the mound were, of course, facing each other off in a standoff before the game today. It was, of course, Shane Sinclair who won it, and they both happened to be matched up again together here in the seventh inning as well. So funny how the baseball gods set up stories like that. Sh Sinclair, however, more importantly, will look to keep this one-run lead for the Sabre Dogs and send it to the bottom of the seventh inning with a zero under the seven on that scoreboard in right center. Due up next inning for the Sabre Dogs will be seven, eight, and nine, Buckle, McDonald, and Paulson as they look to get some insurance here as the Whiskey Jacks bats have been able to wake up a little bit here in this game two of the year. So here comes the three hole hitter, Jake Jelly to the plate. He's 0 for three, a strikeout, a ground out, and a ground out to third back in the fifth inning as the first pitch is on its way. It's taken down low, a fastball, ball one, one and oh the count. 
Sinclair will be the third pitcher of the night for the Sabredogs. It was LeBlanc who started it off, went five innings, allowing just two runs, still in line for the win. Castle went an inning, allowed three runs, and here's Sinclair in the seventh. It's the 1-0 is a breaking ball that misses low for ball two. Two balls, no strikes to count. Three, four, and five due up for the Whiskey Jacks here. Jelly, McDowell, and Drill. Again, thank you to those tuning in on YouTube Live. Make sure to like and subscribe and turn your alerts on so you know when the Sabre Dogs will be playing and streaming live every single night here at Corbett Field. As the 2 0 is a breaking ball on the outside corner for strike one, two and one. Also, make sure to comment your player of the game. The player with the most votes will be our post game interview. Again, I've seen Dalton LeBlanc getting a couple of votes so far on both Mixler and, and YouTube Live. A couple of other big options as well as the next pitch is a breaking ball. Jelly checks his swing and chops it foul down the fir first base line. Count now moves to two balls and two strikes. Now again, the Whiskey Jacks are well into this ball game. Just a one-run deficit here at, at, what, what, at what was one point a four-run deficit. As Sinclair delivers the 2-2, it's a fastball that misses outside for ball three. Three balls, two strikes to count. It's now full. Infield straight up, outfield, same story. Caleb McDowell on deck who swung the bat well. Sinclair set, first base side of the rubber. Shrugs his shoulders, comes set. Here's his 3-2. It's a breaking ball that misses down away. Four ball, four. So a leadoff walk. That puts the tying run on base here for the Whiskey Jacks to open up the top of the seventh inning. And you could see the frustration from Sinclair when he saw that that pitch was called for ball four. He jumped in the air and spun in a full circle, 360 degrees. So he's going to have to regain himself here. Again, a ground ball away from putting himself in a much better spot here, but it's going to be a tough task. As we mentioned, Caleb McDowell to the plate. He's two for three, a home run, a single, struck out back in the fifth. That was the last batter LeBlanc would face. His seventh strikeout of the night, it was. It's the first pitch is swung on and hammered deep to left field. Schwabi can only watch. He's a spectator. It's gone. Caleb McDowell putting the Whiskey Jacks on his back, his second home run of the night. And just like that, Wheat City has taken the lead. It's seven to six here in the top of the seventh inning. And there was no question about that one. Only if it would stay fair or not is Schwabi took two or three steps towards the left field fence and watched it fly not only over the first wall down there, but the second wall as well. Seven to six ball game. First lead of the year for the Whiskey Jacks. And a monumental clutch home run for Caleb McDowell. He is now three for four. Two home runs, a single, three RBIs as well. So after coming into this game 0 for four with a couple of strikeouts, really has avenged himself as the next pitch is down low in the dirt for ball one. One ball, no strikes to count. Nolan, Dr Nolan Drill the hitter at the plate. Drill one for three, a fly to right, a struck, or struck out swinging in the third, singled back in the sixth. Sinclair set. Here's his 1-0. Misses down and away ball two. Two and O oh the count. So now LeBlanc will get a no decision. Will no longer qualify for the win. As Sinclair comes set. Hitters count for drill. Here's his next pitch on the way. Down low again. So 3-0 and oh the count now here. On drill, again, looking to reach base and string more runs along. We know how hot both of these teams have been offensively in this ball game. As the 3-0 is on its way to strike on the outside corner. 3-1 the count. On deck, it's going to be Houston Fogelstrom, then Rhett Stein to follow. Still nobody out, 7-6 Whiskey Jacks. 3-1 is taken down low for ball four, so another walk allowed here by Sinclair. All three base runners have reached. Still nobody out here in the seventh inning as no one's up in the pen currently for the Sabre Dogs. We do see a pitcher jogging back from that direction. Meanwhile, for the Whis Whiskey Jacks down the left field line, no one currently warming up as well. So Sinclair looking for a ground ball double play. Keep this a one-run deficit. Fogelstrom, a right-handed hitter, open stance. First pitch on the way is a breaking ball that bites the outer edge for strike one. 0-1 the count. Fogelstrom, 0 for 7 to open up the young season. Has struck out four times in those seven ABs. He's put the ball in play twice today, a fly to center and a fly to right. 
Trail takes his lead from first. Here's the 0-1 delivery, swung on and tapped foul towards the third base batter's box for strike two. 0-2 the count as his teammate and on deck hitter Rhett Stein picks it up and tosses it back to the home plate umpire. So now seven runs on seven hits, one error for the Whiskey Jacks. Six runs on five hits, no errors for the Sabre Dogs. Sinclair leans it for the sign. He's set first base side again. Here's his 0-2 on the way. Strike three called. Breaking ball over the middle third of the plate. Throws Fogelstrom for a big, big out number one. A much needed out number one. So here comes Rhett Stein to the plate here. He's one for two today. Singled in the second. Grounded to short in the fourth. Walked in the sixth. Good double play candidate right here. Right-handed hitter against the right-handed Sinclair is the first pitch. Is a strike at the knees. 0-1 the count. Looked like another breaking ball right there. Sinclair finding the command for that right here in the last couple batters or so. Leads it for the sign. Glove tucked into his stomach as he now comes set at the chest. Check over to first base. Back in safely is Drill. Drill has reached base twice today. And in total this season, four times has been one of the bigger hitters in this Whiskey Jacks lineup and really was the only hitter that performed last night. Was three for four, picked up three of the four hits, but some other players starting to carry their weight today, including Caleb McDowell. As the 0-1 is swung on and fly down the right field side and foul for strike two. No balls, two strikes now. So still no action in the pen for the Sabredogs. This will very likely be Sinclair's inning here. On deck, the second baseman right-handed hitting Cameron Daigle. Drill takes his lead from first. Sinclair gives him a peek. Now comes set. Here's the 0-2. It's down and away. Ball one is McDonald. The catcher has to slide to his knees to catch that one. One ball, two strikes. About twilight time now here as the sun continues to set. Lights fully in play. Cloudy overcast evening. Quite calm, however. About 54 degrees on at first pitch. It's cooled down by quite a bit as the next pitch is a breaking ball, backup breaking ball that misses up and in for ball two, two and two. Count even at two, one away, Sinclair set. First base side, the pitch on the way is strike three called. Another good breaking ball as Sinclair has found that pitch in the last couple of batters. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, both of them looking Two away now here in the seventh inning. So here comes Cameron Daigle now trying to keep this inning alive here for the Whiskey Jacks. He's 0 for 1. A couple of walks and a ground to short. Again, Drill takes his lead at first base. Really good bounce back from Sinclair after giving up a walk, a home run, then a walk. He's bounced back with a couple of strikeouts. There's another breaking ball over the heart of the plate for strike one. 0-1, so really pitching backwards now has really found the feel for that pitch, and the Whiskey Jacks have struggled to even put it in play. Drill will be going on contact with two away, 7-6 Wheat City. Pitch is outside ball 1-1-0. One, one and, oh. and really, the majority of the damage done by Wheat City this evening has come in the last two innings. Three back in the top of the sixth, two here in the top of the seventh. Again, the Sabredogs led 6-2 to two coming into that fifth inning. Sinclair kicks, fires. The next pitch is a breaking ball swung on and fouled right into the glove of McDonald, who holds on for strike two. One ball, two strikes. So Sinclair can set down the last three batters he faced via strikes with a big pitch right here. Drill takes his lead from first. Will be going on contact. Sinclair kicks, fires. The one, two is inside. Gets away from the catcher, McDonald, who picks it up quite quickly as it rolls out of the batter's circle. Quickly enough to hold Drill at first base. Now the count moves to two balls and two strikes. Deuce is running wild. Two balls, two strikes, two away. Two runs in this seventh inning. Daigle looking to stay alive. Sinclair looking to get out of this inning. Here's his 2-2 two -two on the way. Swing and a foul straight back. Count remains at two and two. Sabre Dogs very well in this ball game still. Again, as we mentioned at the beginning of this inning, they will have seven, eight, and nine due up to open up the bottom of the seventh frame. Declan Buckle, Lance McDonald, and Jack Balson. 
Sinclair comes set, the 2-2, two -two. breaking ball just misses inside, backed up on him a little bit as now the count runs full. That'll allow the runner on first base and drill to get a head start here with three balls, two strikes, and two outs. So base into the gap off the bat of Daigle, likely would be able to score a drill from first base who has good speed and will be going on the pitch. Sinclair comes set from the stretch. There goes the runner. The payoff pitch is just a bit outside. Four ball four. Third walk of the inning surrendered by Sinclair. And now there will be runners on first and second with two away for Brandon Tucker, who came up with the biggest hit of the ball game, arguably, maybe besides the McDowell home run earlier this inning. It was a three-run triple that cleared the bases and made it a 6-5 ball game. And now he has a chance for more here. Three RBIs tonight. Speedy right-handed hitter, open stance, carrying the bat over his right shoulder as he shows bunt, and it's going to chop off of the plate, so it will be a foul ball. 0-1 oh the count. Looked like it chopped maybe off his foot or the plate as it trickled softly out towards the pitcher's mound. The home plate umpire and George Tyree was right on top of it, made the call immediately. So that'll be strike one here with two away. Again, the infield playing back. Tucker showed late, was trying to drag that, obviously going for a base hit here with two outs. Trying to extend the inning for Ethan Stitzman, the leadoff hitter on deck. Sinclair leans it for the sign. You got Drill at second, Daigle at first. Two runs already in on the two-run home run from Caleb McDowell as the Whiskey Jacks have taken their first lead of the season. Sinclair set. About chest high. Takes a peek at Drill at second. Now looks in. The pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Count moves to 0-2 now. Two strikeouts in this inning thus far for Sinclair. Got to imagine he would love number three right here. Tucker struck out three times yesterday. He's put the ball in play every single time at the plate tonight. Sinclair has a lot of room to work with ahead 0-2. Runners will be going on contact. Here's the 0-2 on the way. Breaking ball, strike three called on the inside corner, and that will retire the side. Strikeout number three of the inning for Sinclair. However, the Whiskey Jacks jump back on top for the first time tonight thanks to the two-run shot from Caleb McDowell, who has left the yard now twice today. It's stretch time here at Corbett Field. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Wheat City leads 7-6. For the seventh inning, Whiskey Jacks now leading 7-6 to six as the tides have turned here at Corbett Field. The Sabre Dogs were leading 6-2 to two entering, entering the top of the fifth inning. But after three runs in the top of the fifth and two in the, make that three runs in the top of the sixth and two in the top of the seventh for the Whiskey Jacks, they now lead 7-6. to six. So here comes Declan Buckle to the plate here. First pitch on the way is spiked right into the glove of Blade as it was thrown about 55 feet into the ground, hopped right into the strike zone for Blade who held it there jokingly, of course. Want to know the count. Buckle drove in a run back in the third inning on a 6-4 fielder's choice. He's 0 for 3 today. Next pitch is swung on and popped up behind home plate. Stein, the catcher, will take off the mask and give it a look, but we'll watch it fly off the roof for strike two. Make that strike one, one ball, one strike. We'd like to make a correction it's Griffin Sheeran who is pitching right now. Previously had said Rob Blade, But it's Griffin Sheeran who pitched not only the sixth inning, but will be also pitching this inning as well. She 
Sheeran had a good inning back in the sixth, struck out two batters, did walk Jordan Williams, but he was caught stealing. Good throw by the catcher Stein as well as the next pitch on the way is swung on a miss for strike two. One ball, two strikes the count on Buckle. Buckle did strike out his last time up. That was back in the fifth inning. Courtesy of Jake Anderson. Next pitch on the way is in the dirt, gets away from the catcher, Stein. Will still be ball two either way. Two balls, two strikes. So Sharon looking to keep this lead now. He's in line for the win here for the Whiskey Jacks. He did inherit the ball game with Wheat City losing, but of course the two-run shot from McDowell has really changed the story of this ball game. Here's the 2-2 on the way. Strike three called on the outside corner. Perfectly placed breaking ball. Second time in as many plate appearances in which Buckle has been retired looking. So here's Lance McDonald, the catcher to the plate. He's 0 for 2. His strikeout swinging in the second. Flew to center back in the third. Walked and stole the base back in the fifth inning. Was stranded at third base as the Sabredogs had the bases loaded. It was Bo Brewer at the plate who would pop out to the catcher, Stein. She run from the stretch. His first pitch misses outside for ball one. A backup breaking ball right there. One ball, no strikes. Again with the right-handed she run on the mound. McDonald will be swinging it from the left side. He's a switch hitter. She runs 1-0 is on the way in the dirt for ball two. A bit inside as well. Hitters count now here for McDonald. McDonald had a tremendous at-bat his last time up in the fifth inning. Really rose the pitch count of Jake Anderson. And then eventually would draw a walk after fouling off a countless amount of pitches. Hitters count for him right here. Let's see if he can get a fastball to turn on. She run kicks, fires the 2-0. Swinging a ground ball right side. First baseman Jelly picks on the backhanded side. Will toss to the covering She run at first base for out number two. Mark that one a 3-1 put out. McDonald retired for the third time tonight. And that's going to bring up the nine hole hitter in Jack Paulson. Paulson is 0 for 3. Ground to short, a pop to second both in the fourth and fifth innings as well. Still looking for his first hit of the young season. So this will be quite a statement if Sheeran can set down the Sabre Dogs in order here, especially after taking the lead. Sabre Dogs down to their final seven outs. So the pitch on the way is a fastball that gets to the backstop for ball one. One ball, no strikes. On deck will be Caden Schwabe. Again, that top of the order, so threatening and so powerful through the first two games this season. Again, if you're Benton Schweinfurth, you're looking forward to Caden Schwabe, make that, excuse me, Caden Schwabe getting an opportunity to start a rally here if it doesn't come this inning, at least in the, the bottom of the eighth. She runs set from the stretch, working at a pretty fast pace as the next pitch is in the dirt for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Some action in the Wheat City bullpen. A right-hander starting to toss down there. Currently no action as of now, it looks like, in the Sabredogs bullpen. So looks like Sinclair may come out for a second inning unless the Sabredogs already have someone warmed up. She run leans it for the sign. He comes set. Uh, infield straight up, outfield as well. The 2 well misses down and in for ball three. Three balls, no strikes. Got to imagine Paulson's taking all the way right here, trailing by one. Got the top of your order on deck here with two away, especially. Sheeran comes set. Got to find the zone here. Kicks, fires the 3 0. It's a strike at the knees on the inside corner. Three balls, one strike the count. So seven runs on seven hits, one error for Wheat City. Six runs on five hits, no errors for the Sabre Dogs. She run comes set again. Hitters count here for Paulson. The 3 1 on away. And it's just a bit outside. Four ball four. So a walk on five pitches here to Paulson. He represents the tying run at first base now. And here comes the top of the lineup for the fifth time today. It's going to be Caden Schwabe coming to the dish here. Schwabe has picked up two hits today. He's one for three. Has reached base every time he has come to the plate. Tripled in the first. Scored on the RBI ground out. 
from Alan Greer. We shot an error by the first baseman, Jelly, in the third. Singled and stole home back in the fourth on the double steal attempt with Alan Greer. Then walked back in the fifth inning. Was stranded as a part of that bases loaded spot for the Sabredogs. Looking to reach base again here and extend this inning for Alan Greer, who's on deck. Here's the first pitch from Sheeran on the way. It's a break and the misses down and in for ball one. One and oh the count. Seven to six, Sabredog. Make that seven to six, Whiskey Jacks. Bottom of the seventh inning. Back into this ball game. Most intense, tightest spot that the Sabredogs have found themselves in here early on this season. Sheeran has his glove covering his face as he now comes set. Left handed, speedy hitter, Schwabi. Open stance from the left side. Carrying the bat above his left shoulder. Move over to the first base. Back in safely with a dive is Paulson. Paulson, quite athletic over there at first base. Has good speed. Will be going on contact with two away. The left fielder, Drill, playing a bit in. Shading a little bit towards the left field line as well. Schwabi, what many would call a slap hitter. Slap from the left field for a base hit. A couple innings ago as the next pitch is down and away for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. The catcher in. Stein had the double clutch right there, had some words to say to the home plate umpire, George Tyree, did not like that call. Either way, it will be a 2-0 count here to Schwabi. Hitters count for him, looking for a good pitch to drive right here. Get Alan Greer on deck, Bo Brewer due up in the hole if the Sabredogs can get that far. Paulson takes his lead from first. Schwabi awaits. She runs, comes set from the stretch. Time now called by the home plate umpire, um, umpire excuse me, Tyree. So this pitch will have to hold here. Right-hander continues to toss with the pen for the Whiskey Jacks. Very quiet down the right field line for the Sabredogs. Sheeran. Leans in for the sign, glove parallel with his chest. Now he comes set as his hand and glove unite. Here's the 2-0, oh, big, big swing and a miss from Schwabi. Probably the biggest we've seen him take so far this season for strike one. 2-1, and one, and it was a hitter's count, 2-0, and, oh, and he got a fastball and took a vicious rip at it. Probably looking to shorten up here now with one strike on him. Paulson takes his lead from first base. Infield playing Schwabi straight up. Hits the ball to all fields. Here's the 2-1 on the way. Down low, ball three. Three balls, one strike to count. So it is a hitter's count here. Again, Schwabi has to be selective. A walk right here would force the tying run into scoring position. However, with the way he's been swinging the bat and a 3-1 count, a hitter's count, you know he's looking for a good pitch to hit and drive right here. She run comes set, first base side. Has to make a quality pitch right here. Kicks and fires the 3-1. It's down and in, four ball four. So after two outs to open up the inning, she run walks the next two hitters, back-to-back -back walks. That's going to bring Allen Greer to the plate here with a chance to tie this ball game up. Greer has driven in a run today that came on the ground out to short back in the first inning. Was also hit in the third, singled back in the fourth, and stolen base on the hit and run. Executed perfectly with Schwabi, his buddy at first base, and also walked back in the fifth inning. So he's reached three of the four times he's come to the dish, and that one time he did not reach, he drove in a run. So every at-bat has been productive tonight. Make that every plate appearance has been productive tonight. So Paulson takes his lead from second. Schwabi from first base. Paulson represents the tying run. Schwabi represents the go-ahead run. Greer, a speedy right-handed hitter. Steps to the plate. Slightly open stance. Wave in the black bat above his right shoulder here. Looking for a good pitch to hit. She runs set from the stretch. Taking some time now. Fires the first pitch. It's a fastball on the inside corner for strike one. 0-1 oh the count. We're looking to clutch up right here for the Sabredogs. Again, seven to six Whiskey Jacks after the two run home run from McDowell, his second of the game that came just about a half inning ago. She run comes set, first base side again. Tying run at second, go ahead, run at first. It's Paulson and Schwabi respectively. The 0 1 in the dirt, heading for third is Paulson. To second is Schwabi. They'll both get in there safely. And all of a sudden, the tying run is 90 feet away. The go-ahead run in scoring position at second base. And again, heads up. Savvy base running from the Sabredogs. Paulson at second base read that ball immediately. It spiked about 55 feet. And as that ball touched the ground, he was already taking off for third base. Schwabi right behind him, ready to go, was able to trot into second as well. So with two outs, both will be going on contact here. One and one the count. 
Schwabi, the go-ahead run in scoring position, arguably the fastest on the team. The 1-1 one -one is a strike at the knees, a bit in, or it bites the outside corner as well, excuse me, as the count moves to one ball and two strikes. If Schwabi weren't to be considered the fastest on the team, and it's close, the man at the plate right now may be his biggest competition in Alan Greer. Infield is playing him back. One ball, two strikes. Seven to six, Wheat City. Tying run 90 feet away in Paulson. Go ahead run in scoring position with Schwabi at second. She runs set. Lifts and fires the one, two. Greer checks his swing on a fastball upstairs. The home plate umpire, George Tyree, will ring him up, and that will retire the side. Greer doesn't like it. He wanted to check to second base, but he did not get it. A big strikeout for Sheeran as he strikes out his second hitter of the evening, fourth of the night, is the Sabredog Strand, the tying run at third base, and the go-ahead run at second. We enter the top of the eighth inning. We got a tight one here at Corbett Field. Wheat City leads it 7-6. So Alan Greer did strike out in that situation. Here's Dean Bittner to the plate, a swing and a hard line drive, one hopper that will sneak into center field for a base hit. Two balls right back at Sinclair, one he fields, the other he watches trickle into the outfield for a base hit. So Bittner has picked up his second hit of the night. And some big insurance for the Whiskey Jacks now at first base with one away is Jake Jelly, the big right-handed hitter, walks to the dish. Jelly's 0 for 3 tonight, did reach base in the 7th with a walk. Also struck out looking, grounded out to short on the fielder's choice back in the 3rd. Grounded out to 3rd in the 5th as well. 
Here's the pitch on the way, breaking ball, hard down the third baseline, that's a fair ball as it will roll down the third baseline, left field line in toward the corner. Heading for third is Bittner, he's gonna get the stop sign, the throw into second is in time to get Jelly! What a throw by Caden Schwabe, down the left field line in toward the corner, cut this ball off before it got to the track and threw a strike to the second baseman Paulson in time to retire Jelly. Eliminates the potential second and third one out situation and turns it into a runner on third two out situation. Meanwhile on the play, Bittner moves to third base. But now two outs, a huge play by Caden Schwabe in left field. So here comes Caleb McDowell. Sinclair will have to be careful with him. He's homered twice today, including in the seventh against Sinclair as he swings and lines to left field. Schwabe slides, it goes off of his wrist, it bounces up in the air and rolls towards the wall. Coming around to score is Bittner, heading for third is McDowell. Here's the relay to third, tag applied, is not in time. An RBI triple by Caleb McDowell. He's now three legs of the way to the cycle, but man oh man was it a close play at third base and more the third baseman is having a conversation with Atkinson, the second base umpire currently right now. Again, Schwabe showing off some arm strength right here. This was a hard line drive to left field. He tried to make the diving attempt. It looks like it hit off maybe his wrist and bounced up about 10, 15 feet up in the air, then hopped and rolled to the track. Drill running hard all the way, raced for third base, and the play at third was quite close as Moore applied the tag, but he will be ruled safe. It will be a triple, the second for the Whiskey Jacks tonight. It's now an 8-6 ball game as the pitch on the way to Nolan Drill is taken down and away for ball one. So man, oh man, what a night for Caleb McDowell. He's now picked up four hits, two home runs, a single and a triple as well. The only time he's been retired was a strikeout via LeBlanc in the fifth. Here's Sinclair's 1-0, a weak swing of the base for strike one. Count even at one ball and one strike. So a two-run lead now here for the Whiskey Jackson. Again, quite an effort by Schwab. He was racing in. This ball was sinking on him, had a lot of topspin. Tried to make the best effort he could, but he got past him and rolled to the wall. Here's the 0-1 from Sinclair, swinging a chopper foul down the third base side. So quickly, Sinclair is ahead by two strikes. If Drill could reach and extend the inning, it'll be Houston Fogelstrom to come to the plate, who's on deck, who's 0 for 4. Due up for the Sabredogs in the bottom of the eighth will be 3, 4, and 5, Brewer, Miller, and Williams. Here's the two-strike pitch on the way. Weeks swing and a chopper foul down the third base side. So the count will stay the same. Again, it was a great effort by Schwabe right there with two outs trying to make a heroic catch. If he were to make that catch, that would have kept this a one-run game here with two outs. But now McDowell takes his lead from third base 90 feet away, representing what would be a run to give the Whiskey Jacks a three-run lead. Here's the 0-2 on the way. Just a bit outside, ball one, one and two. The shortstop buckle and the pitcher Sinclair were taking a couple steps towards the first base dugout thinking that was strike three, but they'll have to return. Eight to six, Whiskey Jacks. One run here in the top of the seventh thanks to the RBI triple from Caleb McDowell. St. Clair comes set, here's his one, two. Breaking ball, weak swing and a miss. Four strike, three, pulled the string on him and that will retire the side. St. Clair picks up strikeout number four in the night but the Whiskey Jacks add on to one more with the RBI triple from Caleb McDowell. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Whiskey Jacks lead it eight to six, three, four and five, due up for Sears Valley. The Glenburn Fire Department will be joining the Sirs Valley Saber Dogs at Corbett Field this Thursday for passive boot night in an effort to raise money to help them recover from a devastating fire at their station. As a community, let's show our support for the fire department. The game starts at 7.05 against the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks. The Sirs Valley Saber Dogs are back for another fan giveaway. Fridays are always for our fans. This giveaway will be a water bottle brought to you by the North Star Community Credit Union. The first 500 fans to attend will get one of these Saber Dog branded water bottles. Come out to watch the Sirius Valley Saber Dogs play against the Spearfish Sasquatch at 7:05 at Corbett Field and be a receiver of the giveaway.
the Sears Valley Sabredogs here as we enter the bottom of the after Fogelstrom, they get the Sabre Dogs back in this ballgame here at Corbett Field. 